50th episodes of all sorts of stuff that we have a hard time remembering. Do you ever feel that way? Yeah, yeah. I was just kind of like, shit, what did, we, what did we talk about last week? I kind of already kind of forget, really. what. There's some stuff that stands out. Like, okay, I know Scott Snyder came out with the Batman books. We probably talked about that. But then there's other shit like, oh, right, Star Fox on Coke. Well, I remember, like, whenever we have to, we make a list for, like, our favorite movies of the year, I literally just go back and look at the podcast. I'm like, there we go. That tells me everything I saw. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it's like a record evidence of my life is in podcast form. No, I get you. Um, starting, we might we might be off to a weird start today because, I mean, this is this is first world as fuck. I mean, I, I feel like a little bitch just complaining about it. But whenever I log off Skype, I have so much trouble logging back in, and so it literally took us thirty minutes to go through the like, is this your password? Reset your password. Oh, this is the actually the password over here. You know, doing that whole back and forth thing and. I, I don't I'm, I don't want to be this guy because I know there is probably some human error on my side, but there are times where I'm like, no, no, I know because I only have one of two passwords. So I know it has to be one of these. So I know at some point some techie at Skype had a fuck. Ah, God damn it. You know what I mean? I don't know. Whenever I like have to log into Skype, it always takes about two or three times. And I think it's just due to the fact that I'm fucking old fashioned. I'm using a Microsoft account on the thing. Yeah. But it always yeah. takes like, it's like, oh, that didn't seem right. Oh, that didn't seem right. Oh, there we go. It worked. Oh, oh it's all fixed here on Skype. It might do that, but I'm already kind of like halfway through changing different things when that happens. So part of it's my own fault, I'll fully admit. But there, though, you'll get, we'll reach this point where it's like, um, it's like I know I have this fucking account. Like we don't think you ever acknowledge that account. But at some point, like when I get a little further, it says, "Okay, here's the reset password. Do you want us to send it to your Gmail?" It's like the thing said I didn't have a fucking Gmail account registered. This motherfuckers, you know. <laughs> so, all right, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna dumb, I'm dumb bitching because there's no way to start number 150 just bitching about one well, computers make me mad you know well computers making you mad it's like it's, it's like just kind of like a part of life you know that's why i always tell old people that like never use computers i'm like you're probably better off this way and they're like oh should i get a no, no no don't get a computer whatever you do don't get one life is so grand without one unless you really have to use one to make fucking podcasts and movies and that's your way of life and work and everything just avoid them <laughs> at all costs it's just there's it's too much. It's too much to take on. It, it's, it is literally something that you have to dedicate your whole life to. And are you, do you want to do that? They're like, I, I just wanted to go on the internet and look at funny <laughs> pictures of dogs. Like, no, you don't. That's just the start. <laughs> you, when an old person says they're concerned getting a computer, you just says, here, take a seat, take a seat. You put on Terminator for him. This is what happens. They're like, oh, I fucking knew it. Like, see that? See it? Arnold Schwarzenegger just killed that robot. Just killed Dick Miller. All right. After he gave him a gun, you don't want to do that. All right. Lots of times when old people get computers, though, it's kind of that thing where it's like, okay, there's six hundred dollars you're gonna spend on something that you'll probably never use. <laughs> Sadly enough. I, I, I my, my uh, grandma recently just got a Facebook account and she friended me on it. Like, oh, it's one of those things like I really don't want to like. I'm like, I, I don't want to be. I don't want to be. M m be rude and be like no grandma all my friends are on facebook but at the same time i was just kind of like okay i just click on like now i gotta now, I gotta now you just gotta send her a very like violent picture of grit be like grandma you can be my friend as long as you're okay with this and you like slide it on over <laughs> just like grit stand on top of like two guys blowing their brains out and everything looking over back <laughs> at her like scary looking directly into her eyes and everything like, okay, uh, Grandma, if you're okay with this, then you can be okay, because if not, you're going to be in for a shock. I did not send her, like, please like my grit page. I did not send her that, but no. Uh, <laughs> or, like, come check out my podcast. I have left podcast links, and she's not going to check this out. But um, <laughs> what if she checks out this one? Oh, 150, what a milestone. i got to see what he's been up to. <laughs> but no. <laughs> No, or is that thing like now I gotta watch like oh I can't say I, I can't say like abortion jokes right now can I? <laughs> my grandma on just like you're like oh I'm gonna type this in there it's like grandma's on it's like oh like, oh shit yeah no. Well, speaking of grit, I haven't actually. I want to just give people a heads up. Somebody actually messaged me a little bit ago. Um, like yo, where the fuck's your grit, man? Not somebody. They didn't even like. They didn't even say like my like. They didn't no, even I'm not message me. This was actually on the fucking alley. <laughs> It was dark and rainy and stuff, and somehow they knew who I was. 
pulled out a pulled out a switchblade. It was like, oh, this is where. Oh, this is Jacob Samson. He just <laughs> he's all big. I'm just buff. joking, Jacob. <laughs> he's just big and buff. Where the fuck's the comic? No, I'm just joking, Jacob Samson. I'm just joking. I'm sure you're a really nice guy. Some other guy was gonna yeah. be, beat me up. Happy coincidence with the same name. Yeah. I don't think it was. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, he was big. No, flaming red hair. It was a different guy. No, 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 uh, no, it was actually going to be, uh, what was I going to say? It was somebody, I'm not going to say, oh, people have been asking. One person asked, one person actually asked like, oh, is there, is grit, is, are you still doing that? And I'm just going to say, I am to a capacity, um, as far as like, I'm actually, I just want to get this out of the way real quick. Um, so I know we have a few listeners that actually checked out the comic. Um, Basically, I got this bigger story I'm working on, and I'm actually infusing grit into that. He's part of this bigger story now, and then once that story's done, that's going to lead into grit. It's not a prequel. It's its own stand. Okay, so I don't I don't know how much of that was caught, because Skype's being kind of a bitch again. It knew, it knew we were talking shit at the beginning, so, so it's like, like, oh, I'm going make... to fuck you over in your podcast. It knows. So, but anyway. Um, All I know is this is your, your, like, big adventure, involves grit. Not a prequel. I think that's where you left off at. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not even going to go into what that thing is. There's another story I'm doing. Uh, and I kind of have this habit, and I'm just click getting it out of the way now. I have this habit to get this big, grand idea, and then kind of like, oh, I know what I want to do. But then there's like, can I really get it done in that amount of time? Should I really announce it? So grit will happen eventually. It's just this other things do got to happen first, and I think we're going to work on smaller stuff on the side. So... Can't say, oh, check out, you know, these pages I post, uh, you know, two pages a month at a time, nothing like that. But, you know, so in some capacity, it will happen. This other thing's going to happen more likely first. And but in the meantime, Spencer and I are probably going to work on more like cartoon, like more like humor based stuff and original stuff. And Grit's original. I just mean, you know, simpler stuff. It's more manageable. Yeah. Um. We were totally blessed today by Nintendo for our 150th podcast. Now, I know they weren't doing it for us, but I like to assume that it was a little bit personal. Uh, what uh, what did Nintendo do for us? Well, they had their Nintendo Direct today, and they announced something really big that everybody's been wanting for quite some time. Can you guess what that might be? Uh, Super Mario RPG? Or no, is no, that no, been no. Out for a while? <laughs> For the for their Wii channel or no 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 oh it, Star Fox Star no 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 it's not Star Fox I was kind of bummed there that's what I was that's what I was hoping it was gonna be because where the fuck is that Star Fox thing I asked the other day I was like hello wh where's the information on this and then everybody's like yeah that's right where the fuck is this information I want to hear about Star me, Fox all right give me a few guesses um a uh, it's one of the Nintendo's main characters one of their main okay I'm not sure if this is their main I'm not sure if we're gonna I mean, consider like, this really main like full on main more main than the rest of them Mario not Mario though. Donkey Kong. Not Donkey Kong. Pokemon? Not Pokemon. Legend of Zelda. Yeah. How did it take me that many guesses? I don't know. Go? I was wondering that too. I was like, well, I know. I was just kind of wondering, well, that was like the other one, but I was like, that's too big. So I was like, that's too big for them just to, what, what is it? Is it, because uh, I know that it's, they actually released a trailer for the new game that's going to be for the Wii U. Not the Wii U, it's for the 3DS. Oh, damn, really? Oh, Majora's Mask? Yep. They finally said, oh, they're oh. like, oh, I hear you guys go, you fucks. Here's your 3DS version of Majora's Mask, and it comes out in spring. So that means, oh, that's cool. that means they've been was, working on it totally, and just like all of a sudden, just like, boom, there it is. Well, it's also just a port, but at the same time, that's cool. I mean, I, I was, I'll be honest, I was expecting something a little bigger. At first, I was thinking, okay, like, was like Super Mario Brothers RPG, uh, the, the Seven Stars, was that on the their channel, like their Wii channel? I was wondering yeah. if it was there. I remember, I remember for a while, people were saying, what the fuck is that? So, no, so that's been on there for a, quite some time by now. Okay. Or like maybe a three or a 3DS port of it or something like that, I was thinking maybe. But... Um, well, the, the Majora's Mask, it's not necessarily just a straight-up port. I think it's going to be just like the Ocarina of Time one, where it's almost like... They improve it. Like... It, I don't know how else to describe it. It reminds me more like an HD remake, even though I know it's not really that's what it is. But because mm -hmm. I know Korean Time is like, you know, that is way more than just a regular port. Everything about that. I mean, the graphics just look so much smoother. It almost feels like there's more animation in it. They fix some of the buttons and then whatnot, too. I assumed it would be like a, uh, I assumed it'd be a little bigger than that. That's cool. I mean, I already had an idea that was in the way. I thought it was going to be a kind of a surprise. Like, um... I assumed it was going to be like something we talked about, like, I don't know, like a Pokemon, like red and blue remake, but it was all. Oh, like, yeah. So, something like that. Yeah, not, but for not the consoles that big, rather but... than a handheld. 
But that Majora's Mask has been something that people have been wanting for years. I think about that all the time. I'm like, I really want to play Majora's Mask again, but I just don't want to go back and play it on the GameCube disc. It's probably better to play it on the N64 because on my GameCube, when it froze on me a couple times, and the thing that pisses me off in that game is you have to go like three plus hours before you can save sometimes. And it's like, that's not fucking worth it. Like, Uh that's such a pain in the ass. And that's why, that really is what's kept me from playing that game again. So hopefully the key thing is in the 3DS version. I don't care what else they fucking do. As long as they fix that saving. As long as you can save anywhere in the game and not those fucking little bird things that don't really save, then I'll be happy. That's actually... I'll be honest, that's something that actually stopped me from completing that game. I mean, I know that game ends, and I have uh, I got all the way to, like, the third temple, but I just kind of reached this point, like, I'm fucking done. You know, I just got tired of that whole thing. And I felt bad about it, but, um, yeah, the whole saving the whole saving mechanic of that game is what really irritated me. So, um, but, uh, what was I going to say? But, uh, yeah, that's cool. That's coming out. Maybe, like, I'm sure they probably, Nintendo actually does listen. And sometimes it takes them a while, but they actually do listen. So, who, who knows? Maybe they'll fix that for this game. Well, yeah, and Nintendo's mostly, you know, they kind of hold on to things, and they kind of wait till the right moment, just go, bam, there it is, you know? Mm-hmm. I guess they, they, they never want to flood it all out at you, no matter what, you know? Because that's yeah. the first thing, you see Ocarina of Time, you're like, fuck, next year better be Majora's Mask. Yeah, exactly, yeah. You, yeah I, thought, I thought it'd be, like, pop up a lot sooner, but I guess they almost, it, maybe it's smarter, they just kind of, like, plan it out, because it kind of takes them a while for their first, for their big first-party stuff to come out. They take their sweet time, and I think that was kind of, like, I mean, the Wii made its money back and then some did fine. But, I mean, I think that was kind of like the biggest flaws of the Wii is it just took its sweet time to uh, come out with the games we wanted. And it just basically kind of didn't really care about its third party. And I think, you know, at least have a couple. I mean, it did have a couple of good third party games, but we were all there mainly for Mario, Zelda, and whatnot. Yeah, there was good ones. There Literally, was, there, was no, there was no more heroes. That's what I always look for on is like it, one of its best games on there. And don't get yeah, me wrong, I mean, like there was a lot, there's actually quite a bit of third parties I like. Not not nearly as much as there is on 360 or PS3. But you know, yeah. like I love those Resident Evil, um, the Dark Side Chronicles and the Umbrella Chronicles. Um, they even put, there was a Dead Space shooting one that was really cool on there. As I said, No More Heroes 1 and 2. You can't even get number 2 for anything else. Yeah, like for instance, um, there like, like you said, there were some really good third party games for it, but... When I think back on the Wii U, or uh, just on the Wii, the only things really keeping me there was uh, Zelda, Mario, Mario Kart, Smash Brothers, because there was no Star Fox game. Even though I'm sure it was great, I never played the Metroid uh, Prime 3. Oh yeah, Metroid it. Prime 3 and the other Rim were both really good. Mm-hmm. No matter how- That's just two games. That's just two games that, you know, after how many other, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, no, no lifespan you know the one thing i know i will say like when i line up my wii collection next to my 360 collection i guess you can even say my ps3 one even though i have less for that than the other two i almost go like you know there's just about as many games i really like on the wii as i do the other two systems and mm-hmm. most people always go what i'm like no no no. i mean like i i found a lot of great gems in there i just think about the wii it was a hard the games didn't just stand out you know you saw zelda you saw mario but everything else was sort of hidden. Those Metroid games were hidden, you know? Fucking those Resident Evil ones, even the No More Heroes, you know, almost nobody's played that game. Well, for instance, I want to... I think we, I'll say this. Um, some people say this is a strength. Some people say this is a weakness. Really, when you kind of look back on the Wii, though, um, it I think... Well, generally, I think the reason why 360 and PS3 did really good was because it was a very kind of broad system and it was kind of a catch-all where we was like, no, we're just kind of aiming for Nintendo fans. So if you like Nintendo, there is a good amount of stuff for you as time went on. It just took a little while and there mm-hmm. were a few dry spouts, but um, I guess it had more of a person, I guess it had more individuality and it, that's going to sound so dumb, but it has, I guess maybe a little bit more individu- individuality from the PS three or the 360 the only reason i would kind of get a 360 a a ps3 over a 360 which i didn't would be just for like rep for like uh uh, metal gear solid five or four that'd be the only real thing for me to the only real like thing that kind of made me consider getting a ps3 over a 360 but then at the time i was just like i'll just go for 360 just because it's cheaper (laughs) yeah that was literally the reason i bought mine i was like fuck that playstation looks expensive and they don't play ps2 in one games fuck that thing and then like that's in the long run you kind of go like oh i'm not too sure it's like you know you kind of weigh the odds it's like maybe the playstation's a better system the xbox has a better controller Mm -hmm. 
Wii's got the best games. That's how I always kind of figure it's like the one thing I will say it's like it has the best games if you're a Nintendo fan. I guess that's true. But I always feel like I'm like I look at Skyward Sword probably compared to in and Twilight Princess, and I compare them to almost every game on Xbox 360 and PS3, and I go, well, right there, those two games are pretty much they hold the bar. I mean, by this point, it's just a personal preference which one's better. Yeah, but uh, I think also the later the later life of the uh, PlayStation 3 and 360, that's where we started seeing a lot more of Call of Duty, a lot more Battlefield, and just these very generic, just first-person shooters that didn't really stand out a whole lot. Not saying they're not well-made games, that just after a while, they just kind of repackage them with a few faint little twists. And I think that it's cool that Activision was smart enough to kind of be like, oh, you know what, we are just kind of pushing out the same shit, and people are, even our hardcore fans, are starting to notice. So maybe we should go back and just take our time with this like we used to. You know, They started treating games for a while like sports titles, where they released one every single year. And, you mm-hmm. know, the perfect example I look at is Assassin's Creed games. Because, I, I, you know, I, I really like those games. And, you know, I remember I played the first one because I borrowed it from you. Then I got the second one. And I never even finished it. <laughs> I got the second one a couple There's months. that fucking glitch. There's a fucking glitch. Yeah, there, there's glitch. Yeah, the first one kind of has its problems. But the second one's where it gets all really amazing. You know, and I finished that one. And the third one came out. And I got a couple months later, got that one. Or third one as in, like, Assassin's Creed 2 Brotherhood, which was confusing. And then, and then there was just too many games. It's like they almost were coming out faster than, like, I could kind of play them, and it's like, one, Ubisoft, that's not the only game I play. I play a lot of other games there, so you can't be releasing these long 30-plus-hour games, you know, every single year. Come on, at least every other year, because then there come a point where it's just like, then there was Assassin's Creed 2, 3, then there was Assassin's Creed 3, and then there was that PSP one, and then there was the, um, you know, number 4, and fucking number five's coming out right now. It's just like... I, I, I bought number three. I haven't even got into it yet, really. I started it for like two hours and it was just like, I feel overwhelmed. I remember on, I just remember this. Was, I don't remember if, it, if this person still views in, but I remember, uh, I don't think it was David Freselon, but someone called in and or like wrote in and, and I remember this was the Wreck-It Ralph podcast. We were just bitching and moaning about Wreck-It Ralph and then we were talking about, oh, you know, uh, Man with the Iron Fist was good, just not as good as we hoped for. Ever we the, it ended with somebody writing in and saying like tell me how overrated assassin's creed 3 is yet and now this many years later we're still like yeah i haven't finished it <laughs> i barely even started it really was it's just, it's just one of those ones it's like because they're commitment games you know and as i kind of get older i i almost like appreciate just like quick run throughs yeah it's like I, like i really like it's like mostly what i do a lot of times now is i play a lot of super nintendo sega genesis and regular nintendo games and then other systems around that same time period Mm-hmm. And I like those kind of games where I can sit down, it's challenging, and then, like, you know, but I'm done in two hours. Like, I've been going through, like, a run-through. Ever since that Castlevania, like, hardcore uh, history guide came out, mm-hmm. I've kind of just been playing a bunch of Castlevania games. And, you know, I beat number one again for regular Nintendo, number three, number four, working on Dracula X. And just, like, yeah, I kind of enjoy those games because it's just one of those ones, like, you know, it only takes a couple of hours to play through them. They're hard as fuck, so you get your kind of challenge in there. I mean, like, at the end of Castlevania 3, it, w- it was to the point where, you know, every enemy does a quarter damage to you. No matter what, fucking Bat does a quarter damage to you, you mm-hmm. know? And then when you finally get the Dracula, and, like, right where I, like, saved that, it was like, well, fuck, I don't want to have to, like... If I have to get more health again, I have to restart, and then you have to run through the whole fucking little maze again. It's like, fuck that, it's not worth it. So on one hit kill, I had to beat Dracula in all three of his forms without getting hit Ugh. once. I literally had it fucking timed out like where every single thing was. And I defeated Dracula pretty much perfect. And but you're, you're, I had to retry talking- like literally a hundred times or something. I don't know how many times I retried. You see, that's the point where I'm just kind of like, fuck this. <laughs> I'm just going to put it on easy. Or I just don't. I don't have the patience for that right there. there, there I mean, I'm not going to. There, there, there's really... nothing easier than that. That That, that, that is kind of like, I don't think there's a harder mode in it, but. Really? Oh, okay. No, that, well, that just... is like, you know. Wait, well, here... so. So. All right, go ahead. I was going to say, but the, here's the difference, though, from, from, you know, back in the day to now. Because, you know, back in the day, if you're playing on regular Nintendo, you would get to that part and then you'd go like, oh, okay, I got a battle Dracula. And then if you had that part. And then you'd get there, and then you'd fucking die, and you'd be like, God damn it. And then you're like, I just sort of got an idea of what, how his moves work. And then, next thing you know, and then you have to start that whole, I don't know if you have to start the whole level over there, but you still got to start. Every time you die, on that one, they don't just put you right back to where Dracula is like they did in the first one. 
they literally make you start like at least four or five rooms away. And those rooms are like, there's a part where you have to jump across these pendulums going back and forth. Mm -hmm. There's fucking bats flying. And that well, part was um, itself, because you know, it's on Rainbow Nintendo. I was just like, you fucking bat! Fuck you, you stupid fucking bat! Because if it hits you, you fly backwards and you fall off the edge. It's like, that's it. One fucking one hit kill from a bat. You know, so I was just so pissed. But you know, nowadays, with the save states. I'm, I'm, how many, how, how, how long did it take you to do that before Laura threatened to smash your NES with a hammer? I don't think she wants. Well, I was playing <laughs> at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> I, I was. No, no, that's practically a true, true story right there, except for that. But. She, she gets scared and goes into that room because I get up and I'm just like, you fuck, you stupid fuck. And she's probably like, you know, if anybody hears us, they probably think I'm, you're like beating me or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I like those games. It's like she can never figure out. She's like, how do you get so into these games? You know what I mean? They just seem like it makes you frustrated. I'm like, I don't know. That's just part of video games. It's like yelling and swearing. Maybe there's like this like manly <laughs> urge that you get where you're like, I get a yell. And for some reason, if I just yell normally, I look like a crazy person. But if I'm yelling at a TV, it, it's, it's just it's a way it's like it's a way to release. It's kind of like you know when people would grab pillows and yell into it. Will yeah, our, our sort of like modern day manly game rage thing is a fucking just yell at a TV. I I'll say this. Um, I'm never really that good. The cut out? No, I was gonna say. Hands up. Okay. Back to my really quickly. What I was gonna say. The nice thing about nowadays, though, is with those save states, and I really don't think of them as cheating because you still have to fucking beat all the parts. Yeah. To me, all it really does is it keeps yeah, that... Yeah, should it, do. Well, yeah, that and it also... Okay, so instead of, like, if I die at Dracula, then I gotta fucking run through the whole fucking level again, which I already have done, I can just start right back up at Dracula and just keep battling Dracula until I figure it out and then, you know, go through the game. And I don't, that's why yeah. I don't consider them cheating. To me, mm -hmm. cheating would be, like giving me unlimited life or something like that. That's cheating. But yeah. there, it's like, I still have to do every single thing. You know what I mean? And those save states, it's not like you can just kind of save like halfway through a battle and just, or else then you start and then you're just kind of fucked. You know, you got to kind of mm -hmm. plan it out right. So by doing it like that, it almost puts the challenge in there, but not the frustration of like, because the main thing you used to turn me off when I was a little kid was just like, when you die and you restart that far back, you're like, fuck this. This is stupid. Stupid fucking game. And you turn it off. And then you might come, you'll come back to it probably later and be like, okay, I fucking got this. I'm going to do it this time. But yeah, like I could not imagine just fucking dying and then restarting the whole level, dying and then restarting the whole level. Like it would drive me up the wall. Too much work. But with save states, game. though, it's like, it's great. I mean, that's where I've gone back and I've beaten a lot of games that I was never able to be able to, never able to beat on the consoles. Mm hmm. No, I'll say this. There is that, um, I think something, well, actually, first I was going to say something. about the yelling and the angry and rage. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, that. What's going with that is you're talking about, you're with that with Castlevania. Like, here's the way I view it. I think that, like, I'm kind of like, I'm by no means. Anybody can fight me at Street Fighter and I'll lose badly most of the time. Regardless, I love that game. I'm absolutely horrible at it. But it's almost kind of like an abusive relationship, you know? It's kind of like, just keep on going back. No, 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 she she really does care about me. It just, you know, when she wants to, it's it's just really nice. But sometimes she just has these bad days. That's just get my ass kicked the game. It's almost kind of like, it's almost kind of like, you know, like, for instance, it's like you have that one friend, like, why are you dating that guy? Or why are you dating her? She fucking cheats on you? She, she fucks all your friends? She's, wh wh why are you, like, I don't know, man, I just... I just love her. I just, I just keep going back. I don't know why. I just, I, I can't find it. You know, that's kind of what Street Fighter is to me because it always like fucking beats me mercilessly. It makes me feel like an idiot. But then I keep on like, don't fucking leave me. Come back to it. You know, you know Street Fighter. And I'm usually one of those people who just gets so frustrated with the game. I just like say, fuck this and walk away. I, I really, I, I, I don't really have, when it comes to video games, a lot of willpower and a lot of, um, patience there are games where i i mean i usually finish most games but if i reach a point where like i'm not having fun anymore fuck this game i'm trading it in for something else i have no problems with that so um i maybe i'm not as dedicated as other people some people are like you're not a real gamer if that's the case fuck it i don't care but uh yeah so now it's kind of like it sounds like your Castlevania thing is something similar. Only rather than you, just, rather than me just being accepting it, like okay, we'll work this out. You're just kind of like fuck you, Castlevania, fuck you, like losing your shit on it. My favorite part when like, when you play old games, especially like regular Nintendo games, anything around there, is like you'll start yelling at fucking inanimate objects that are so small, like you know, because in Castlevania, something that fucks you over a lot of times is the fucking stairs. 
Because they have a weird way you get to walk up. So you're like, you fucking stairs. What the fuck, stairs? Fuck you, stairs. And then, it's like my metal. Not- it's like my Metal Gear when I was yelling at that truck that fucking like those stupid warp trucks that you don't know it's a warp truck until you step into it, and then it takes you all the way fucking back, and you're like, fucking truck. Well, now um, I never actually found myself yelling at like inanimate objects so much as I would just like you know bad guys or or uh, you know that or or one, or even sometimes like the fucking com- the, the the programmers just getting angry at the fuck. What fucking asshole thought it would be a good idea? You know, <laughs> kind of like <laughs> charging me like on Devil May Cry three, like charging me for not even a fucking life, but for a fucking continue to start off here just to fucking die again. You know, just kind of getting this total primal like caveman rage. You know. I remember Devil May Cry. It was Devil May Cry one. That was the first time I ever broke a controller. Was on that game. I don't know if I just got re- if I just happened to be really good. I remember the first time I played that game, I just I didn't beat it because I had to go. I was playing at a friend's house. It was like it was that it was that age when you crash at your friend's house, you'd wake up before them, and I was just playing that game straight through. Didn't die, doing awesome, doing great on like normal. You know, I buy the game. You know, a couple years later at a used video game store, Players Kingdom, actually something that maybe two people who listen might listen to the podcast know what I'm talking about. But good times. And, Go to Player's Kingdom and bought it used and then just straight up got my ass kicked. And after dying a few times, things like, yo, dumbass, we do got an easy mode. Just if you want, if you you know feel like being a bitch, you know, here it is. You, know? hey, you can put on this uh, purple headband, too. <laughs> <laughs> and these chapless pants and uh, you can play the easy mode. Yeah. Fucking pussy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so. I think it was Ninja Gaiden, if you got, like, the Ninja Gaiden black, and you... It was all pink. Yeah, they put, like, a little pink bow on your so- sword or whatever. And it, and it does not go away. It's out of shame. <laughs> so you can't, it makes it so you're not going to fight your friends over and, and, like, beat the final boss. Be like, dude, are you fucking playing on the easy... No, man! Fuck off! I'm just trying to beat it, man. Fuck That's off. where you play as the girl instead of Ryu Hayabusa. and With the, part of a costume. Yeah, it's one of her costume. That's what she's a girl. That's why she has pink. Not because it's uneasy. What was that? Nothing. Nothing. Just uh, you're not what? playing as a girl. You're playing as Ryu there. It's a girl in my game. Fucking. You just got the fag version. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> For being a guy who likes to dress his characters in very like feminine outfits and pink bows, he is very kind of like trying to be macho dominant. Like, <laughs> oh, like alpha. He's got. She's, if that's a girl, she's got a real low voice too. <laughs> uh, no, I uh, I don't know if I could have the patience for something like Ninja Gaiden because I hear. Did you ever see the the? This is an older one, but did you ever see the Ego Raptor like Ninja Gaiden like cartoon? Yeah, that one's a great one. <laughs> Where he says, "I got this game, Ninja Gaiden. Must be really hard." Then he just jumps out of TV, beats the shit out of Aaron. He says, "Oh my god, like that, that's fucking hard." I'm just Toriel level. That's the next fucking level over there. Like pans over, there's like a thousand ninjas, <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> and "Like this is something Ego Raptor can do so good." It's like he just has like this angry primal voice that he can just I don't know he can just do it so easily and so like he says God help me he's like God can help you now the way he animates his eyes are huge just leaning in <laughs> and he's just yelling well that, he, he's got the good yell that's like the key thing I always say about Ego Raptor it's like the yell is what like that is why he's popular is because of that yell more than anything else you know I think, and I think yeah. this well who knows he said he's probably really good at it he probably sits there for three days like not talking to anybody after recording <laughs> that <laughs> I'm gonna say this. I mean, I don't really watch Let's Plays, but once in a while, this is almost sounds like a Dusecki's thing. Like, I don't really. Oh, no, not Duse- yeah, uh, I don't really Duse- watch Let's Plays, but when I do, I watch Game Grumps. <laughs> no, that's true though. I don't really watch too many, and I'll watch Game Grumps. But what I'll do is I won't just sit there and watch it. Hey, I'll, I'll look up the little Game Grumps animated because it'll just take some of the best moments, just animate to them, and those can be pretty funny. Those can be pretty addictive. I'll sometimes I'll, it's almost kind of like a podcast and. It's just listen. So I'll just maybe just put it on and listen to it because you don't really got to watch it for very many of the jokes. Maybe you have to pan back for a second, but j- I'll just listen to it. And when Aaron just loses uh, Ego Raptor, when Aaron just loses his shit entirely, that's kind of like the funniest stuff. When he gets so angry at a game, like there's a, there's an episode where he was playing Mario Sunshine and he was losing to it, and he was just he kind of starts screaming. You hear him walk away from the couch, and you literally 
It just wasn't a sound effect. You could tell he punched the hole in the wall or flipped something over. Just you hear like, oh my god, what the fuck's wrong with you? You hear him screaming off camera, like, just my whole fucking life is a lie. You hear him like knock something else over. It's funny because like you know Mario can also be like one of those kind of no people. I don't think anybody thinks of it, but like that can always be one of the most frustrating games. I mean, perfect example. Me and Cisco got the fucking cops called on us for playing Mario Galaxy. Hey, Mario Galaxy? Yeah. I think that one's easier compared to other ones. Mario well, Galaxy? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's easier compared to other ones. But there's always just, like, that one level. And I remember, like, we got that game the day it came out, and we are sitting there playing, and we are like, in San Francisco at that on point. On separate TVs. Yeah, yeah. Se- separate Wii, separate <laughs> TVs. Fuck, we're both playing Mario Galaxy at the same time. I think we're like... I remember you guys would say something like, guys, we're going to have a Wii party, which, I mean, I, everyone knows what you mean, but at the same there's time... There's that guy like, oh, dude, we're having a Wii party? No, 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 Wii party, like... And oh. the thing is, when you would have, and I, I, I would, we'd, the thing about it, here's this kind of sad thing. It was funny, but it was kind of the sad thing. And they were fun still, but it was okay. It would be at your house or even at your guys' apartment in San Francisco when you guys lived here. You would say, okay, we're having a Wii party. Okay. So you'd think a bunch of, okay, Mario Party, Smash Brothers, Mario Kart, whatever, something to that effect. You're like, no, no, bring your own Wii and a small TV if you can. And we're all just going to sit in the same room and play one player games and bullshit to each other. Strange enough, I miss those days. Like, that's something I miss a lot is because uh, me and Cisco used to do it more than anything else. It's like, I came over it a few times for that, yeah. We would play the like uh, the thing that we always did. And the people thought, we like to play. Yeah, before, before the Wii, what we like to do a lot, people thought this was kind of weird, is we'd play Final Fantasy together, yet we'd both have our, we'd be playing two different TVs, two different games at the same time, but we'd, we wouldn't play them but when we're by ourselves. We'd literally have to like set the TVs up, fucking bring over your PlayStation, and then we'd both be playing them at the same time. And I, it was a weird thing, but I was like... It was just something you did. And we'd go over and fucking, like... It was like a bonding experience. I mean, play for, like, 14 hours straight. Like, marathon play of those games. I mean, there was one time I beat Final Fantasy VIII in literally three days. Fucking... Okay, I want to actually bring something up. I uh, don't want to go into too much detail. Do we, do we want to hear the story of, like, why the cops called on Mario Galaxy? Well, we can do that in a we second. We kind of just left that going we'll, there. We got we'll the cops up. called on us. We'll build up to that. I want to go over something else real quick. Um... I won't say, well, I'll, I'll say it to an extent. I don't want to say too much because she is a friend of mine. I haven't talked to her in a while, but she still is a friend of mine. And on top of that, um, it was, you know, it was a kind of, a, it was a weird, rough time for both of you. But if you don't want to, I like, I did like, you, you like the story. The final fantasy. The- She's a friend of mine. I know she was going through some shit, so I feel a little bad. But on top of that, though, <laughs> just the, the core concept the Final Fantasy Ultimatum. Avoid names if you can, but you could say your girlfriend at the time or whatever. Yes, because this, this is another great story, too. Just more like great, it's great and bad all at the same time, but still, it's one of those ones like you could write it down in the book of like, fuck, I, like I did this. That three day Final Fantasy marathon of Final Fantasy VIII, <laughs> the girlfriend at the time, broke up with me over that part because she had no idea what I was doing. She thought I was out doing something horrible with Cisco. <laughs> And all we were doing was, like, fucking playing Final Fantasy VIII, like, to the max. (laughs) Eating pizza and shit and fucking just, like, hanging out inside his house all day long for, like, three days straight. (laughs) She thought you were doing something horrible with Cisco. Like, you guys were out, like, fucking and killing hookers and doing lines of blow off the, like, the hood of it at a time is fucking, like... It's that gay ass Thunderbird. (laughs) This is, like, before the Thunderbird, I want to say, too. I want to say... This was this was, this was the Volvo time period of Cisco's. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna dedicate it there, but no, like just literally, like, cause how many people gonna say that? Like, oh yeah, girlfriend broke up with me, like, over because I was playing too much video games or whatever. But mine was more like she didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Like, why would anybody go for three days straight, like, over to their buddy's house? They gotta be up to something wrong. <laughs> it was like, so sometimes you almost gotta sit people down, and explain them. Like, there's this time period every summer. Me and Cisco have to get together. And, and sometimes it lasts a month. Sometimes it lasts two. Maybe only two weeks. You, I, you can't predict it. But there is going to be a lot of Final Fantasy playing. A copious amount. I mean, like, literally 12, 14 hours straight. That's like some Brian Cranston shit. Like, walking in, like, I'm the one who knocks kind of shit right there. <laughs> Skyler. Do not question me. 
I am the one who, you know, there's that whole spit right there. It's just like, who do you think you're talking to? You know, <laughs> when I play Final Fantasy, I'm going to go and play Final Fantasy. So I would suggest to tread lightly or whatever. I'm getting, and I'm mixing, people are going to say, you're mixing up two different speeches. I fucking Fuck know. Fuck you. We're, we're it out. <laughs> we get the gist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, it's like, so, yeah. those final, and, and weird thing too is I was thinking about this literally the other day. I was like, I haven't had one of those Final Fantasy marathons like that, though, in years. I probably actually have not hardcore at least played a Final Fantasy game, meaning, like, from start to finish. And I almost want to say, like, five or six years. It's been a while. And I used to do that. I mean, like, that was a fucking, like, tradition. Like, fuck Christmas, fuck Thanksgiving. There was Final Fantasy summer. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, like, and it also involved other RPGs. And, you know, they're similar. You know, Chrono Trigger, fucking, like, Legend of Dragoon and stuff. But Final Fantasy was the core game. And it was one of those ones, like, you know, you'd mostly pick about two or three different Final Fantasies you're going to beat each time, you know. And as I said, sometimes it's gone on to points where it beat, like, five in a row. Mm-hmm. I think now the Final Fantasy character... I mean, I mean, I, never, I was never really a diehard Final Fantasy fan. I mean, oh, yeah, I saw some of the characters and design and look of it were cool. But now not even that's enough to kind of grasp me because everybody just looks so, like... For being this world where people are, like, killing left and right... They all look so clean cut and so stylish and so and like so metro. It's just kind of like it's hard to be kind of like that guy doesn't know action. I know I know it's a, I know it's like a he's a computer generated character. It's like that guy can't that that guy doesn't know what the, you know you know what I mean. I don't know. It's just one well, of those things. Final just, Fantasy is one. It's it's one of those genres where I always like to say it. It really is in my top five favorite game franchises, but there hasn't been a true Final Fantasy since Ten Two, you know. After that, that's where they all became like runaround action RPGs, you know. So I don't consider it's they're not traditional turn based. So I kind of that's where I left off at, you know. And even you know, ten, you know, it was almost like a decline from there too, because eight probably being the pinnacle, nine being good, but it has some flaws in it. But I like the story and I like the world a lot and the characters. Ten, that almost was kind of the start of the change into the whole like next like generation of Final Fantasy fans. Yet still a good enough game. You know, I wish you could level up in it. That's like my big qualm. And then Ten Two kind of fixes all those problems because you can level up in it and it has all the cool features from a lot of the older Final Fantasy games. But after that, that's it. And I was saying another downfall too, it sounds like such a weird fucking thing. But it's talking. In RPGs, I think it should be all reading. Unless maybe it's a CG cutscene or something like that. And even, no, I get you. And it's, I don't know, I, I look at it, I guess it's like a book. You know, when you read a book, like a novel, you picture kind of what these characters sound like. And that sort of was like part of like what made an RPG great is you go like you, in your mind, you kind of describe how these characters talk, you know, how they say certain things and so on, you know. And then the second that somebody comes in and voiceovers it, then you go, that's not how they fucking sound. Or Especially if the voiceovers aren't that great. I remember I was playing one game for 360 or whatever, uh, fucking RPG, and I, I just turned to Japanese. I was like, if I turn to Japanese, it's almost like the olden days, because I can't understand is, what they're saying. I kind of see what you mean. I mean, that's not, I mean, this is more of just, like, someone else's interpretation, but for instance, like, before Edge of Tomorrow came out, I was reading the book, All You Need Is Kill, mm-hmm. and, uh, after, after I finished that, I, I ordered the graphic novel of it. I'm just like, oh, there's a graphic novel coming out? Cool, you know. And the thing about it, I mean, I, I mean, I was able, I think the book and the movie are separate enough to where you can uh, differentiate the two. I think they're both, they're both different enough where it's not, it, you don't feel like, like, oh, I've seen this before. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, it just, it, really the movie just kind of takes the core concept and it has a few similar names. Beyond that, it's its own story. Uh, but no, reading, but then like I, I got the graphic novel and the graphic novel was, it followed the story, but it was almost kind of like, that's not how I imagine they look. And I don't really like doing that. That was one of those things, like, every so often that happens. It doesn't happen very often to me, but that was one of those cases where I'm like, I imagine that's how the mech suits look. They look so stupid. I thought they look cooler than that. Or, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Or, like, I thought there'd be more violence, or I thought that, no, okay. You know you know what I mean? There, yeah, there's a little bit more of, like, kind of like, because, you know, uh, well, even, yeah, you know what I'm saying. You get the point. No, I know what you mean, though. But, like, it's something about that. That's where kind of RPGs ruin it. And, like... Still to this day, I'm always asking people, and I've said it on the podcast, I've said it on Twitter, I've said it in many places, just like, somebody point out to me a game that's not a 3DS game, or, or you know, a handheld, that's a traditional RPG, turn-based, no running around, that's on, like, the modern systems. And there's, like, there's nothing out there. 
And, you know, the closest I, one there was was Lost Odyssey. But the only downfall of Lost Odyssey, they had the class systems. I don't like that class thing. To me, it's like, no, 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 no. I don't want characters to be forced to be like, they have to use magic because that's stupid. And that's mm-hmm. kind of where that game lost me at. That game had potential, had a lot of potential, but... Did you finish it? No, I got two discs into it. And I was like, yeah, it's just... It, now, I, I guess also, too, the, the older I get, like, with RPGs, because there's a lot of RPGs I've started, like, because I played some of them on, like, 360, I just pick them up. But if the game, as well as once, like, like an RPG is just such a commitment. So if it's not getting me on, like, all levels, then I just kind of go, you know, I'll just go to the next one. You know? That is kind of one of those things, if you don't really give a shit for the story or at least the uh, play mechanics, then by that point it is like, eh, fuck it. Well, because yeah, the whole point about an RPG, it's, like, more important than anything else. Oh, you lost that sound. Oh. Is that a Wolverine shirt? Oh, yeah. Check this out. How long Oops. have you had that shit? Oh, is it recording? a couple months. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty badass. I feel like being like a gay pose, like, oh, check out my chest. Yeah. Who the well, fuck is calling me right now to the podcast? Laura, Laura walks in like, oh, I fucking knew it. I fucking I knew fucking it. I fucking knew it. I don't know why she's not British all of a sudden, but. <laughs> but um, yeah, back to RPGs. That, you know, that's just the only thing is there's so many of them I starred and they were cool, but they just weren't cool enough, you know? And the, yeah. ba- the battle mechanics is the most important thing in an RPG. That's more important than the story and everything else because. You're going to be doing way more battling than you're going to be doing anything else in those games. So if the game doesn't play good, that's it. That's the bottom line. Yeah. You know, perfect example. This goes. This ties all the way back around to that Zelda thing. I finally started playing my Wind Waker HD copy that I've had since I got Mario Kart 8 because it was a free giveaway. Which really, I will say this. If you want to sell any one of your games, like hardcore, do what Nintendo did of Mario Kart 8. You know, because what they did is... um. They said if you bought the game, you know, in about the first, I almost want to say they gave, they almost gave you two months. In the first two months, if you bought the game and you re- registered it on Club Nintendo, they would give you one out of four free downloads for Wii U games. Oh, you know, wow. yeah, I mean, like you could get okay, Wind Waker HD. That that already was like fucked. That's like, yeah, you know, I'm totally getting that. But I guess if you already had that one, you could also get the Super Mario Brothers like Wii U, not like the really good one, but the one that kind of like. The half-assed one, which is still a good game, but the one that I, we played together. The Wii? Oh, yeah, that one. The that one, one is... The one... I think I had... I had Wii. I had Wii. No, no, no that no, one the was Wii U fun. one, though. Oh, I never played... Oh, yeah, that Did, one. Didn't we play it once together? Because it I came with my Wii once, U. I was... Yeah, it was like one of the last times... It was the last time I was visiting you, and I only had like 20 minutes to play it because I had to leave. But thought, yeah. We played um, Mario Kart 8 that time. Mario Kart 8. What are we talking about? We put Mario Kart 8. What, what, I'm sorry, what'd you say then? You Mario know, you know that new Super Mario Brothers that came out for those? Oh, new Super Mario. So the, yeah, the, the 2D yeah. side scrolling one, not the new Super Mario Brothers. The fuck, they got fixed. Is, is it still fun? Is that one still a fun game? It, it, here's the like, thing it's still a fun game. It's just kind of that, like, been there, done that kind of game. Yeah. Just like. Isn't it, isn't it weird how, like, you can kind of go back to this day and play like Mario World and still just as fun. But then you kind of go back to this thing that's trying to emulate it with better graphics, smoother controls, and for whatever reason, it just doesn't hit you. Just no, like, oh, I've seen not, it. Not nearly as good. It's just going to happen. I've seen it, yet I'm willing to go back and play this older version that's it's, it's, it's probably not nearly superior, but for whatever reason, just more playable. Well, here, here's, the, here's the other couple games that kind of went with it, too. Is you could get those two, Wind Waker, Mario... They also had um, Pikmin 3, and then I think they had like some weird something else. It was just kind of like almost like you a Wii download, Sports, but no. You could download Pikmin 3? Yeah, these, and these were all free. It was like a little, you got a free download voucher. Are you but, sure it wasn't Pikmin 2? Because Pikmin 3 was a Wii, re, Wii U release. Yeah, this is a Wii U. This is all for the Wii U. Wow, you could just download Pikmin 3 for free. I guess not enough people were buying it. It's like, ah, oh, fuck it. I guess they ain't going to buy it. They'll get it with a free, free Well, you had to buy Mario Kart 8 first. Yeah, yeah. But still, that just that just surprises me right there. But, that's not but these, these were all Wii U games, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. But it's like, really, you think about that? If you want to sell any one of your games, do that. That really is just like, that's an instant sale. Because I'll say this, I might not have bought Mario Kart 8 like day one if that was the case. When mm-hmm. I knew that I was getting Mario Kart 8 and the Wind Waker for the same price, I was like, "Fuck, this sounds like a great deal." I still got to get my Wii U. I don't. I, I want to get. Uh, I want to get like a. I want to get a PlayStation 4. Not so sure about it though right now. Just mainly because I mainly I mainly need to get a Blu-ray player. That's yeah. what I mainly need. I need. I need a Blu-ray player. So I'm like, well, if I'm going to spend some like at least sixty bucks to get a Blu-ray player, I might as well go sixty into, bucks like, towards a PS4. 
60 bucks towards a PlayStation 4. Yeah, but at the same time, it's, I, at this moment, I mean, I know there are PlayStation 4 games I'll want to get, but at this moment, there's more Wii U games I want to get. Some of this ultimatum, I'm like, well, I do like laying on my bed and watching <laughs> movies rather than sitting in a chair at my desk and watching them. But still, it's one of those, and I know that's... The downfall like I said, is I feel the... Like such a, I feel like just a, such a whiny bitch saying that right there, just because I know that is, like, first world is fuck, and I know how stu- stupid that sounds. Like, oh. Well, you see, right now I have to sit in my chair and watch a movie instead of lay down. Well, yeah, you could pick your computer up and put it across. Like, yes, but I have to get up, adjust it just right. There has to be a controller. No, no, you know. So, yeah. Well, man, orange, worst people alive. The downfall of the Wii U is that it doesn't play any movies unless you like have Netflix or something. Yeah, that, that's one of the things. Like, well, you know, what? don't play movies. So, uh, hey, don't play no movies now. Don't play movies, and uh, I too much of a cheap bastard to go pay eight bucks a month for Netflix right now. So <laughs> maybe eventually, maybe eventually. I just don't. I just don't have the. I don't know. I mean, I, I could. I have. I I could do that. I just there was a time when a friend of mine had Netflix, and I was watching her cats, and I just watched all this television because I haven't watched. I don't watch TV anymore, so it's just like <gasps> all these shows, and just kind of like got addicted. But now I kind of now that I realize, you know, the streaming thing. But now I realize that. They really, it's not, they don't, now whenever I go over to a friend's house and they have Netflix, now it's just so many more, more people have it, so they know how much they can pull away from you. So it's like, oh, there's not as much of a selection and this and that. Before it seemed like anything you typed in, it would appear. Now it's just kind of like, no, oh, this, no. Might have, you know, half a season, quarter of a season, I don't know. Exactly, exactly, so, yeah. But, but um, I've actually, I've been watching The Flash a lot. That's actually one of the few shows I have been keeping up on. The Flash is really good. Did you check out Constantine? No, I didn't check out Constantine. They did an, I did an amazing job on that one. Is he actually British with blonde hair? He's British with blonde hair. He's an alcoholic, and then they make the show as fantasy as fuck. Like, they don't try to ground it in reality, which is the nice part. I'll have to check that one out. Is that on NBC, or what's that one on? Yeah, it's like on NBC on, like, Friday nights or something weird like that. I kind of like how all, for all, like, the... I mean, look, I, I, I'll i be honest, so far, as far as DC live action shows, uh, C, uh, the uh, Flash is the best one that I've seen, but... That being said, you can still see the CW-ness. I almost kind of wish they put... They, I almost wish they kind of did what they did with... Uh, let, me, let me explain this. Because Gotham is not as good of a show. But I like its presentation more. It doesn't seem like it's trying to aim for 20-year-old... Like, for, like, you know, 15 to 20-year-olds. It feel, Girls, yeah. it feels like it's trying to be a lot more broader. And on top of that, it also feels like um, it's trying to treat it more serious. Even though they're treating it more serious, it still feels like they're pulling away too much i almost wish they kind of use that and put it towards flash because flash even though it still feels like a little kind of like aimed at a younger crowd it's still a pretty good show and it still captures a lot of what well I think's I, good flash. I think with the flash too what they're doing a little bit different it's gonna get better it's well what they're doing with the flash differently than arrow is because arrow is so serious of a show that i think they want to make flash kind of like the a little bit more fun show because everything's it's got a little bit more comedy in it a little bit more you know happiness and whatnot not a bunch of serious people standing in a fucking cave looking at each other. Yeah, <laughs> just staring, just angry stares. Like, no, I see that. No, I, I have no problem with it being a little bit more lighthearted, and a little bit more funnier. Mm-hmm. That makes I'm totally because that's in the comic. I'm totally yeah. Fine with I think that, that works totally. Um, with that it's more of um, it's more of kind of like you know just kind of like the love triangle shit. The awkward kind of like oh I like this girl but she doesn't recognize that kind of thing and. I mean, Iris. I mean, I don't really know. I mean, I know that she, I I know that she wasn't like. Uh, I don't. I think that there there always was this weird tension between them, and it took a little while for them to actually get together. But I don't think it was as blatantly as obvious. Like, why don't they notice me? This thing we've kind of gone over in every romantic show, with or any romantic triangle ever happened in any show, you know. So that kind of stuff right there. But still, I think it's a pretty good show, and I'm not going to let that weigh it down. I kind of knew that was going to be there, so. I'm kind of glad that nearly, I mean, I don't know. I, the Miss guy, he might be a character. I don't know. But I think nearly everybody in that show is actually in the comic. Something I didn't realize till earlier, till later, I mean, earlier. What the fuck's wrong with me? Something that I didn't realize till later. You know the chick that works at Star Labs? Mm-hmm. She actually is going to become Killer Frost. Oh, is that who that is? I looked it up on Wikipedia. And maybe they just a little nod. They're never going to come full circle to that. But... They changed her first name because I want to say Killer Frost's first name is actually it's not Caitlyn it's it's uh, 
uh, it's, it's not Caitlin, but it's something that starts with a C or a K. Sounds kind of similar. And they even made a, so much as a little nod. That guy who, like her boyfriend who or her fiance who died in there, mm-hmm. in that like little wormhole thing, that guy's going to become Firestorm. That guy's Firestorm? Because they kind of had like, they kind of, huh. Well, that might be true because I say like, Firestorm's supposed to be in the next episode or whatever. And she made a little nod saying like, she said a little thing. No, no, not heat. No, are you thinking heat wave? Or are you oh, yeah, no, I was thinking heat wave. Never mind, my bad. Firestorm's the guy that has fire for hair, yellow yeah, suit. Yeah, you're right. Superhero. And then Heat Wave's the guy who just has like the flamethrower. Yeah, which I don't really think Heat Wave got cool. Really, in my opinion, I mean, he just seemed like another villain. I mean, if he was there, oh, that's cool. But he didn't really seem that cool to me until he got like a furnace built into his chest. It's all just kind of a cosmetic thing, not even so much like <laughs> personality-wise. I always I mean, I mean, like Captain Cold just because of his personality, not so much of his powers. I just thought they did a pretty good job, Captain Cold, especially once they got later on where they, they gave him the fucking parka. Once they gave him the parka, I was like, okay, there we go. The one thing about Captain Cold, even though I think they got his personality down pretty good and his presentation, I thought was all really fine. The one thing I wish they did is I wish he made the gun instead of Cisco. I wish, and Cisco, that's actually another character who he, he becomes, like I guess, a superhero called Vibe. And he's just a miscellaneous character that works for Star Labs. Hmm. So um, they're doing a lot of little, like, you know, foreshadowing. Oh, and that line, that there's a line that she says in, um, that uh, Caitlin says in that episode. She says, like, oh, yeah, we always made a joke that I was like ice, he was like fire when she was talking about her boyfriend. Oh, yeah, that's true, huh? So, yeah, they are pointing out there. Yeah, because I never so, knew what Killer Frost's actual name was. It was something that started with a C or a K. I only know that because they said that in Suicide Squad or well, like Batman Arkham Assault Suicide Squad. Might as well yeah, be that. Might as well be that. But no, check, actually, out, check out that Constantine show. I kid you not. They And it's one of those ones like I'm not like a total Constantine expert. I really just know more like who he is and what he does and like seen mm-hmm. him in other things. But um, and sometimes that kind of makes you like a show a little bit more when you don't know nearly as much about it. Because you can't, the reason I, cause you can't like, go in there and nitpick it, sort of like a Gotham. Because Goth, you know, I will say Gotham's gotten much better as it goes on. And maybe it's just that I've accepted that it's not Batman show, that I'm not watching a superhero show, I'm watching something else. I started to watch it again. I'm, I I was watching partway through episode three or four. I don't, the one with the balloons. And then I fell asleep partway through, so I got to finish it. But um, That balloon episode, that, that's like the second episode or something like that. That's still one. That's like the third one. I saw the second one. That's like okay. the third or the fourth. Yeah. Yeah, I like the penguin stuff. I like everything I'm seeing for penguin so far. But um, yeah, he's, I switched. Really, to... he's the main character of the show, more, more than Jim weird. Gordon. Yeah, it's kind of weird, but he has like everything's more revolved around him. Jim Gordon's almost the B character of the show. Sounds mm-hmm. weird, but that's kind of how it really plays out. I wonder if there's, I wonder if like that. I wonder if they're gonna do kind of like a Johnny Depp, um, um, uh, Johnny Depp. What's his name? Uh, 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 Oliver Bloom, Orlando Bloom, Orlando, Orlando Bloom. Bloom. Yeah, yeah, kind of thing where, like, they, they made Pirates of the Caribbean with every intent, saying, like, okay, this is going to be the Orlando Bloom show. The Johnny Depp quickly became way more popular. He's like, let's <laughs> hold back just a second. Just stretches his arm out, like, in front of Orlando Bloom. <laughs> okay, snap that photo. <laughs> yeah. Step back just a minute. Crosses his arms with, like, let's bring it in. Crosses his arms with the gun and the sword. Take the picture now. All right, yeah, we're good, right? You know. There we go. That's what we're all here for. But um, there was actually uh, I, yeah, I I do want to kind of tune back into Gotham because like I said, when it first started, I'm like, you know, I like it. I'm not in love with it, but I like it. You know, I actually do like Flash, but I'll say this. The one thing I wish they did with uh, with Captain Cold is I wish he created the gun oh, because yeah. that's one of the things that made him special is that he was like this blue collar guy who just happened to have a lot of blue collar guy with a weird he has kind of like a weird moral code to an extent but he also just had like well i know enough to make a gun out of this thing so and i i kind of wish he made it rather than just pawning it off and just becoming just some thug but still they had his personality down and they kind of he has like these weird little moments of kindness you know when he's not robbing people i mean they don't get that much in this episode but like you know there's an episode where an uh, issue where he was sitting there he knew like wally west was flash and he's sitting there at a, at a diner and he knew he, who he was talking to, but he's kind of relaxing and just kind of like being very kind of no, no pun intended, kind of cold, kind of just, but very kind of like, oh, I got your lunch. Don't worry about it. You know, just being kind of chill with them, just mm-hmm. bullshitting with them. Kind of like, 
and then later they kind of meet up again at this diner. Like it's this weird thing. Like, Oh yeah. They kind of go to the same diner and they kind of have this like conversation and they just kind of like, you know, kind of there for each other. And they kind of bump back into each other out in the field is like, is flash and captain cold. So. Yeah. For some reason, I feel like I read that one. So, I mean, I think if I remember correctly, he kind of had an idea. He was flash cause he had amnesia somehow, but he hadn't, he knew enough. He's like, I'm not going to expose him. He's just, you know, he well, does his thing. I do my thing, and that's kind of what I like about Captain Cold. He's like, I always look at those flash villains. They always feel like it's not. They're doing it like it's a job. They always everything's like this is just this is my work. This is what I do. It's not like it's nothing personal. It's not like ha ha ha. I am evil. It's like look, I'm not going to work minimum wage, and I just happen to be good uh, when it comes to like uh, making freeze weapons. So that's what I'm going to do. And if someone gets in my way, they're stupid enough to do that. Fuck them, you know. Yeah. I think that's a, I think that's a really cool way to approach a villain rather than be kind of like I'm doing it because I am evil, you know. So which that's how a lot of them start, but you know as time goes on, you change them, make, you mix them up. Yeah, exactly. But no, I uh, well, go see what you're gonna say. I was gonna say, but it seems like pr- but about this point, all those shows have gotten all four of them are all pretty darn good. You know, Gotham I still feel is the one lagging a little bit behind the other three, just for the fact that it's it, it's got weird things in it too, like. I don't know, like, like they're going for this kind of, like, all the technology in Gotham, if you notice, like, nobody's using a computer, they're using a typewriter. But then they'll pull out a cell phone, which is like, what the fuck? And then, like, there'll be other things where it's like they put this old, they almost, what it reminds me of is, like, they're really trying to make it feel like it's out of the Tim Burton Batman movies. Like the look, I can kind of see that. Like, it, 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 it has like that, it, it reminds me of, like, that look of kind of, maybe not nearly as... I guess you would say kind of weird gothic-y, but like it does have that kind of say, it's almost like as good that for that. Look, but like that look, but goes by the rules of Christopher Nolan. Yeah, sort of like that. I just, the only thing about the old timey thing is I just can't figure out like, why why are they using typewriters? But then you'll see something else. It's just more visually interesting. I think it's just one of those things, more visually interesting. And even in the cartoon, they try to give it this thing. It was almost hard to, place the time because you saw it looked like it could have been taking place in the 40s but then you'd see some like computer or you know batmobile would have even though it had this weird 40s like you know art deco kind of kind of look to it or the buildings of this art deco look to it Mm -hmm. it would all have this very just kind of like sleek in some semi-futuristic almost kind of like this disney's tomorrowland kind of vibe to it but just happened to be kind of gothic and dark you know I i feel like in the animated series that works totally good but, and I know that's what they're trying to do in, in Gotham. It just, it seems kind of weird. Cause it just seems like they're sort of, I don't know, but maybe they're just not mixing it right. Not like it's a bad thing. I, I do think it's cool looking at stuff like that. And I do like the concept of like, you know, sort of a back in time feel. But I almost feel <laughs> they should just, might as well just say it's a period piece. Like it takes place in like 19 fucking like 80s, if that's what you want to be. Don't make mm-hmm. it. It just seems kind of weird to have it just, we're in the modern days, yet it's in the like they don't really explain that part. That's why I'm kind of it's kind of a weird thing. No, I got gotcha. you. Uh, well, I'm I'm still curious. I still want to check it out. I mean, I, I'm on. Like I said, I, I kind of fell asleep through part way through episode three just because I was hell tired. But I'm gonna finish it. It wasn't bad. It was just I was fucking tired. So I'm gonna finish that one up, and then I'm just gonna keep on trying to catch up. I'm already caught up on Flash. I'm enjoying that. I'll check out John Constantine. What I think they're trying to do right now is I think that we, I mean. I think they're trying to prepare us for movies to come out for like next movies. Cause like now they, they have a flash show and they're talking about doing the flash green light, green lantern movie. I don't know if that's still in the pipes, but they're talking about doing the flash slash green lantern movie. And then a little bit before they announced, um, a little before they announced, uh, you mean green arrow, uh, green land. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, no. They're, they're talking about flash, flash green, green lantern. Okay. A flash green lantern team up movie. They're talking about that. I don't know if that's still in the pipes, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Before that, though, they uh, – well, actually, no, actually, a little after that, they started putting all the Suicide Squad and Deadshot and Deathstroke and all this stuff. I think they're almost doing that just to prepare, to prepare people who aren't comic fans to uh, – oh, a Deathstroke movie's coming out, which they announced a Deathstroke movie. Mm-hmm. And they said, or to, like, prepare them for the Suicide, uh, Squad, Suicide movie. Squad movie. Yeah, because we already got – I'm guessing, I don't know for a fact, I'm going to guess Suicide Squad or members of the Suicide Squad or in Arrow. I know they're in Smallville. They put, they're putting like Death, like Deathstroke, Deadshot. They're in the Arkham games. Even if you don't, even if you don't watch the cartoon, I mean, the, the animated DC cartoons, they have, they, you, they throw, okay, look, Suicide Squad's on the cover of this thing. I mean, before the Green Arrow, Green Lantern movie came out, 
they came out with two animated Green Lantern movies. So even if you didn't know anything about Green Lantern and even watch those movies, you'd walk by it like, oh, I've seen that before. That's a thing, you know? Yeah, they, they prep you for them. The one thing so I, I think do, if, once they do that Justice League movie, they really should just use, you know, Green Arrow and The Flash from the TV shows and just whip them in the movie. Which, they're not gonna. No, they're not gonna do that. That's that's like an old fashioned thing to do. You know what I mean? But it just seems kind of like you have it already set up like that. Just like might as well. And like that would be the ultimate thing to do is just to combine your TV shows with your movies. Like it's all one universe. I feel like now like Marvel and DC are starting to pull from each other because now the Civil War movie is going to happen for Captain America. And they're not calling it it, but it's basically going to become Captain America versus Iron Man. If I had to guess. Yeah. There's gonna be more to it than that, but that's what Civil War was. It was Captain America versus Iron Man. Mm-hmm. So now I'm, I'm kind of wondering what's uh, like they got they n- n- where's it going with this. So now I'm kind of wondering, like, are they because they sort of seem like some of these things they're kind of making up as they went along. So now I wonder if they're going to pull one from like that's a good point what you brought up. Pull like one from Marvel's playbook, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. show, yeah. which is like within the whole Marvel movie universe, it just focuses on like, you know, um, apparently from what I heard, they're actually going to start making like B and C list characters, like sh- regulars on the show. Like Mockingbird is going to be a regular of huh. their team, which that's almost kind of like if they did that from the beginning, if they said, okay, look, here's a show. It's all the B C list characters working with like agents of shield. So you got like moon Knight, Mockingbird, they already have a show coming out for these guys, but Iron Fist, Luke Cage, I, I'd, I'd watch that. I'd watch that. But when I hear it's just a bunch of like people like oh, in suits doing like S.H.I.E.L.D. stuff, I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Well, the one thing about Marvel, I'll say this. I really could give a flying fuck about S.H.I.E.L.D. I, if S.H.I.E.L.D. was not in Marvel, I would be happy. I, I just don't care for them that much. They just remind me of just the annoying Republicans that kind of fly around and bother everybody else. And it, it, Nick Fury's cool, but yeah. And even, yeah, Nick Fury, it's like, maybe it's like, if Nick Fury was not Nick Fury of S.H.I.E.L.D., if he was just like Nick Fury of, I don't know, Nick the, Fury. the Nick Fury fan club, like, I'd be much more into it. Because when he's in S.H.I.E.L.D., it's kind of like, well, Nick Fury's cool, but, you know, it's he's doing something, that, like, he's he's part of an organization I don't like or I don't care for. So it's kind of like, he, that makes me not like him nearly as much. Not saying he's bad, but... I don't know. That's just the one thing. So it's like when there's the age of Shield TV Jackson. show, it's like so. I could care less about you know Shield TV show. Why the fuck do I want to see a Shield TV show? Well, it's Samuel Jackson, Nick Fury, and that and that right there is kind of like the oh well, it's Samuel Jackson. So I already like him. You well, know? yeah, I, 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 that's I, what I mean. It's like I like him like that. But if just think if he was not part of Shield, how much more would you oh, like him? Exactly. <laughs> that's what I mean. I'll say this. If he though, was fucking I'll... like you know samuel jackson nick fury and he was fucking like riding on thor's back going into battle how much more would you like him? riding on thor's back this 60 <laughs> year old ba- black man riding in on chris hemsworth back like no <laughs> motherfucker go <laughs> like toting a gun with shit. a machine gun just riding on thor's back <laughs> fuck yeah i just have that I just have like the next poster for Avengers 2, it's just like Chris Hemsworth with a fucking hammer, Samuel Jackson getting a piggyback ride on him with like a machine gun. <laughs> he almost just looks like he's fucking like Yoda. And shit's Star gotta Wars. go down, motherfucker. <laughs> oh my god. Would, would you That's not the see the movie. fucking like was Thor, just Thor Nick Fury just... team up movie where like the whole thing, they're, they're teamed up. Why <laughs> they teamed up? Well, Nick shoulders. Fury's fucking right on his back. Like, why is he right on his back? Well, how else do you think he's going to get around? He doesn't fucking have superpowers. <laughs> That's the whole fucking movie. No, it's literally like a Mario and Yoshi kind of thing. He's just sitting on his fucking back. He does not get up. People don't acknowledge it, you know? <laughs> Except for when they get to a castle, then fucking Thor has, he has to get off Thor. <laughs> he's just Thor, you have to wait out here. I have to go it alone. <laughs> That, oh my god. That would make that movie. Make that and then I'll fucking watch Age in the Shield if that was the case. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, no. Um I'll say this though. Uh audience is fucking interesting after that conversation. But no, um <laughs> but uh I wanna say that the something I heard about Agents of Shield, which actually sounded kinda interesting to me, was they said that like since in Captain America 2, since you find out Shield was compromised by Hydra, now it's kind of like the main characters of the show are kind of like, oh, their bosses are turning on them and they're kind of on the run too. That sounds kind of cool, but it's kind of like, uh, I don't know if I want to have to sit through all that just to get to that I don't one little to, cool moment. 
Well, characters, from what I hear, is like what they said it's going to be. And I can see the show getting better as it went on. And I'm here, I'm saying I, it will get better. I've never watched a fucking episode of it. But um, it's one of those things like uh, what I heard about it was uh, they said they're going to have like B, C list characters kind of come in, make appearances. Characters from the actual movies eventually will appear. There's an episode with Jamie Alexander, who played Sif in the Thor movies, come in and help them find. You know, like, is, is a Marvel movie would come out there would be an episode of S.H.I.E.L.D. that parallel it. And that's kind of cool to me. It's just put in some characters from the comics I give a shit about. When you already got this whole world populated by characters I like, why... I don't want to stomp creativity. There could be a few of them there. But why make these new made-up characters the central focus when I can just watch these characters that I know are there that are way more interesting? And I know you can't afford Robert Downey Jr. in there for every episode, but maybe, you know, just... Like I said, here, like what they're gonna do, like bring Mockingbird in there. Just get these weird B, C list characters that you know that won't, don't have. They're they not won't get, have. They're not gonna get a movie, so. Eventually, they could. I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy got a fucking movie, so that's true. But that's not, that's not one get... single character. That's like saying that like, uh -huh. Root's gonna get his own solo movie. Well, what's gonna happen as soon as um, other like members of Guardians of the Galaxy end up like just stop getting too old to do them or just their contract runs out. Or they want to do them or the movies, hopefully they don't, but unfortunately, but they eventually start to suck, which I hope they don't. Now you're talking about Marvel in a whole, not just Guardians of the Galaxy, right? Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay. I'm talking, once that happens, you know, the first thing they're going to do is the, the Groot and Rocket movie. Because Bradley Cooper, all he has well, to the, do is his. Th that's almost like the Thor Nick Fury movie. You just put fucking Rocket Raccoon on the back of Groot. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, no, well that, that that's different because those are two C those are two CG characters. Yeah, you don't need really actors. I mean, you literally could have somebody else do the voice, and you wouldn't notice the difference. Need be, yeah. You could just have you could use the same audio you used for like Guardians of the Galaxy one for Vin Diesel, and he'd still probably get paid for it too. <laughs> so, um, well, it's, I, there's you know there's perfect examples. There's um I remember uh that Star Wars the CG sh like movie that turned to the TV show. The guy that plays uh, fucking Obi Wan Kenobi, I mean uh -huh. that 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 voice actor sounds identical to um, Hugh McGregor. Hugh McGregor. So it's like you know you can always find somebody who has like the same voice, you know, just to kind of like click in there. So that's why that like the Rocket Raccoon and fucking Groot movie is like a win win situation. The second, yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy starts to dwindle and the you know actors start to leave, they're just gonna jump right to Rocket Raccoon and Groot. Um, which I hope it doesn't, and I'll say, I, I've said this before, I liked Guardians so much that I don't want to read the comics because I feel like I'm going to be nitpicking here and there. I even kind of looked at a little thing, like, oh, like a little like YouTube thing, like all the Easter eggs within Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. There's some things like, okay, they, they changed that pretty much right there, but Yondu, the, the blue dude with, mm -hmm. the, uh, with the arrow, he's way different in there. At one point in time, he was a member of like the original Guardians of the Galaxy, and... He also, he doesn't look like some kind of like inbred hillbilly bounty hunter. He looks more like he's straight out of like Arabian Nights. Huh. So it's like some characters, and like, I'm like, it was almost kind of one of those things, like, ignorance, like, I don't want to know that because I like this movie. I don't want it to ruin it for me. So it's just kind of like, I just didn't even, yeah. So I'm just, I, I don't want to read that comic because I, I don't, because I really think that's probably like their second best movie. And it's not even that Captain America 2 is actually better i just think it's a matter of preferences you know yeah i agree there too and i think that's also that's where i was go with the constantine tv show since i don't know a ton about john constantine it almost makes that you probably think the show is better because you just can't go in there and nitpick it. it's like the more you know that's why i think gotham kind of like at first we were just had like the fucking gotham rant because it was just like when you know batman so well like he fucking is your next door neighbor and you know <laughs> and he lets you and he invites you over for fucking dinner every night you, you and you feel like you got this real personal like bonding relationship. Then you start like judging. And then you ask, me. then you ask like Bruce, does it always have to be like protein smoothies? Can it be like you know steak? Just one steak has fat that lowers <laughs> that hides cholesterol. I, I know Bruce. Like, <laughs> he, he, he probably like there's steak thing. in that smoothie. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what was I gonna say regarding that? Well, they're I, they they mention. They're, they mentioned the possibility of another Constantine movie or like a Justice League dark movie. So have bringing in Zantana, Swamp Thing, John Constantine, all for the same movie. So I wouldn't surprise me the least bit if they're just trying to prep, prep us up for this next one.
That's true. That I mean, what before before the Avengers movie? By the time the Avengers movie was announced, mm -hmm. they came out with I haven't seen it, but they came out with that Disney cartoon for Avengers by the time it was announced. So just preparing kids. Oh, that was I'm, a really bet, good show too. And a lot of people didn't really want know what Avengers was so much. They really didn't. I mean, I, we knew of it, but I didn't. I really couldn't tell you a whole lot about the Avengers. I was just like, okay, yeah, it has these members of it. And I know they rotate in and out. I was reading New Avengers at the time. But a lot of people probably wouldn't like just say the Avengers. Like, oh, you mean that old Sean Connery movie? Like, oh, no, the Marvel characters. And that just kind of, I think, that way it also prepared people. I remember people. when so, I was a kid and that Avengers like remake came from the TV show. I was like, oh, my God, it's a fucking Captain America. And then you're like, oh, that's not Captain America. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. I was so Sean thrown off because I was so excited when I heard that title come on. And then Why was, is James Bond the bad guy? Yeah. We well, you know what it no, that also reminds me of though is there's that movie it just came out called like Nightcrawler. And when oh. I first see that, like in my mind, I, it's like I know it's not true, but it, I do think is that a standalone X Men Nightcrawler movie? We're not. We live in that age where that could happen, but at the same time, because we we actually do. We do live in that age where that could happen because, like I said, Guardians of the Galaxy happened. I mm -hmm. think people have a better idea of who Nightcrawler is than that. So, exactly. but um, regarding that though. Um, I think because by that before that movie came out, they I so even if like kids are into it, parents at least know. Oh, my kid likes this thing called Avengers. It has the Iron Man guy. It has the the Green Man who's pissed off. What people uh, adult probably knows who Hulk is by this point. But yeah, because you know the Lou Ferrigno TV show and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I say an adult like maybe meet someone from our parents' age. Like <laughs> I still have trouble thinking of myself as adult. I'll tell you this: I, I this day and age, I never refer to myself as an adult. Because when, when I think of an adult, I just always think of my parents. Like, that's no matter how old they get, even though they're like almost in this, you know, senior citizens category now, which is mm -hmm. that, makes you, that makes you still go, like, nope, still not an adult. Still, yeah, still yeah. kid. Look, like, I don't own a house, I don't own a timeshare. That makes you an adult, right? <laughs> you <know>? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, what I go by. that's the two like rites of passage. Not paying your own rent. Not paying your own insurance, it's, do you own a house? Do you have a timeshare? I'm going off of that. Yeah, you can pay all those other bills and stuff. It's just, yeah, it's like, yeah, the timeshare? And if do am I pay, making house payments? Yeah, I'm not making, I mean, not even, let's even remove the timeshare. That's just more funny. But, like, don't have a house, I'm just paying rent, and I don't even have a car right now. So, yeah, but, uh, just going off of that. Marvel actually has something really cool coming out that they kind of, like, teased online for 2015. Now, it's not movie a movie. Or comics? Huh? Co uh, you just said it's not a movie. So comics or a video game? It, it, it's a comic. But um, I'd like to show it to you. Like I have a picture of it, but you'd never be able Your, to. I see the lights are down in your office. I know. Maybe that will help out, though. Can I? Yeah, I'm just seeing bright. bright. Just saying, I can't tell what that is. Yeah, well, whatever. They're making the 1992 um, X-Men TV show, the cartoon show, but they're doing a comic book continuation of it or something like that. Oh, that's cool, because it just ended abruptly, didn't it? Not really. It just kind of just ended without, like, a, a closure, I guess you could say, which that's very common for older TV shows. I mean, it's like, Batman does that, too. Like, just, It's kind of run in like, fuck, it's ending! You know, with their arms up in the air. Well, the weird thing, too, about the X-Men show is, like, the last, like, I almost want to say only, like, five episodes, the animation completely changes. Like, and it's only yeah. for, like, five episodes or something like that. Well, the, the end of Batman isn't just another episode. It's no real closure point. It's just another episode. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's just another episode. It's not like... I mean, obviously, yes, it goes on in Justice League and Batman Beyond, but I mean... That's because the show got canceled. Like, oh, I'll continue it in some way. And that's what I love so much. You could tell, like... That's what, I'm, what makes me kind of angry about, well, at the time, what was Warner Brothers Animation, or at least the, the networks, uh -huh. because they made them... Um... Can you still hear me? I saw you yeah. stepped out of frame for a second. Okay. Yeah, because they made them look like. Uh, I, I just want to say this: nobody else can see what I'm looking at. Whenever I look at you, you look like you're like in front of like it's like it's the every episode of Seinfeld. You just got this brick wall behind you. It's like you're doing some like stand up like or like or at least like a Literally, 70 it's like, a, like a comedy club like place like. Yeah, or at least like a 70s sitcom where for whatever reason, I remember a lot of houses just had brick inside of them, just like brick house. You don't know. Anyway, what was I gonna say? Ah, uh, da da da. Oh yeah, so. Shit, what was I saying? I don't remember what you were saying. It was not Batman. Oh, yeah, you know, like uh, Warner Brothers Animation, at least the networks, would often, even though the show was getting good reviews and 
getting lots of ratings like yeah well just make it more for kids so uh you, you know rather than just trying like uh bring it in a different time slot or something so that's they that so many good shows got cut short they just still because... do that to this day and age you look perks look at yeah. beware the batman they're like that show's not good enough or just or just league um, or, Young uh, Justice. Just, well, just league Un- unlimited and young justice you know so and they don't even like the worst part too is like they don't even give them a long enough run they barely give them maybe one to two seasons and that's it Mm-hmm. And we've said this before, but it's like no show is going to make it in one or two seasons. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess there'll be those rare ones where they just sort of click. So many good shows get canceled so quickly. That's the sad thing about Warner Brothers Animation right now. Now, I mean, it's not even Warner Brothers Animation. It's just the networks, really. So, yeah, I mean, it probably has something still to do with them, but still. To an extent. And even Mar- Marvel's been like that, too, because they'll start shows and they'll cancel shows. It's like, what the fuck? Like, they mm-hmm. did that, the, the Wolverine and the X-Men one. Um, they did, the, there was a Avengers show that came out that had, like, a one or two season run. Then they started up a different one, which, don't remember, the other one's just as good, too. It has, the only thing that's really weird in it, though, is, like, in this latest Marvel one, because I've caught a couple episodes on TV every once in a while when I, like, something's there. It's mostly, whenever I find TV, I just flip right back to the cartoons channels. It's like, what the fuck's on that, like, I haven't seen? And I was like, oh, mm-hmm. I did a new Avengers show? But it's got this weird thing where the show will cut between... 185 widescreen and 240 widescreen, just back and forth, and I, don't, I have no idea why. Not, not, that's... not like an anime style where like somebody gets serious and like you know it cut closes down. Yeah. On. Like it just literally just cuts back and forth. You know, I mean sometimes it has to do with action and whatnot because I guess they want to make it feel cinematic, but it still seems mm-hmm. so weird. Something that sounded like I'll say this: it's cool. I guess they're trying to spread awareness of like lesser-known characters. But when I first heard of, I mean, I heard about the show a little while ago. Then I figured I'll go look it up on YouTube. There's that show, Hulk's in the Agent of Smash. Now, recently, I've become like a. I mean, I've always liked the Hulk, but I started reading the comics. I'm becoming such a bigger fan of that character now. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh my god, it's a team of all the random Hulk characters. So it's Hulk, uh, Abomination, or, or A Bomb, which is basically Rick, the guy that Bruce Banner saves from the radiation, becomes uh-huh. the next Abomination, and his name is A Bomb. So that him, Red Hulk, She Hulk, Red She Hulk, Scar, which is the son of Hulk. So I'm like, oh my god, that's gotta be fucking awesome. And then I just look, man, I watched the trailer to it, and it's not the same thing. But it looks so sour. And we're like, come on, Team Hulk, we gotta go. Yeah, you know, it looked almost kind of like just the the way it, the way it was going about it. Maybe it's a really cool show. I don't know. But I was just like, I, I kind of know what happened to those characters and how they start, and just seeing kind of like them saying like cheeky little one-liners to each other. You know, like he's getting red hot. You know, and they're talking about the fucking Red Hulk or whatever. Just like, oh, fuck. or or like hot or red mad or some some, some uh, bullshit. Like, and that's the one know. that Paul Dini was like changed teams for. And maybe it is a really good show. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. I, I'm going solely off a trailer rather than the actual seeing the move rather than uh. seeing the show. But still, it was just like, what the fuck is this? You know, I was like, because I because I like I like those characters so much. And I was just like, what the what the maybe maybe it is a really good show. But I was just like, what the fuck, man? You know, well, Marvel did really I feel like such a I, sorry, go ahead. I say Marvel did a really good job. And like the Wolverine and the X-Men was amazing. Both the mm-hmm. Avengers shows are really good. There's um there was a Spider-Man show that's already done that people say that it's full on fantastic and I almost kind of want to pick it up because they had the complete collection but now they're on another Spider-Man one and it's okay it's kind of made for like modern kids where like Spider-Man is just like breaking the fourth wall type humor yeah literally almost without breaking the fourth wall he probably that's pretty much what he's doing just kind of seems a little too slapsticky but it's well not, they said it's not bad it's just like I mean, I know there's, there's that fine line with Spider-Man because, you know, he has to be somewhat comedic. But then if he's, like, too comedic, then is it, is it – well, when does it end? I don't remember the guy's name, but there is actually an interview on Smodcast because Scott Mosier um, wrote a few episodes for that show. And uh, basically, there's, it was like it was, a, it, was a, it was a short episode of Smodcast. It says, so to fill up, the, fill up the blank, we have, like, 40 to 50 minutes of this interview we had with this guy. And this is a guy who worked in comics. I don't remember. He worked on cable. He worked on. Um, he, he worked. He he was involved in all the image stuff. He was like one of those '90s like writers, you know. Uh-huh. He may have been an artist as well. I don't remember. But he 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 worked with Marvel for a little while. Worked with DC for a little while, and then did, went to Image. And then from there, he and Paul Dini and other people started just working in the animation industry. And he is one of the guys who created Ben Ten. And from there, they created, uh, they got, you know, they got the opportunity to, 
to work on this Ultimate Spider-Man show. And when he was talking about it, because you could tell he was passionate about when it came to comics and his own original stuff. Mm -hmm. But when it came to Ultimate Spider-Man, this Ultimate Spider-Man show they're talking about, you could tell he did not give a flying fuck. You could tell he says like, you know, we just do a little bit more of the breaking the fourth wall kind of thing. And, you know, just giving, uh, just make, just kind of playing it by ear. You know, he just, just, he's just like, he said like a joke, like, he, not even a joke. He said like, what do you mean breaking the fourth wall? Like, well, I don't know. I'll cut the thing. Like spread it, like spread, someone's shooting fire at Spider-Man. He'll say like, oh, I'm, I'm going to turn to toast. And then all of a sudden it cuts the picture of Spider-Man popping up a toaster like toast. You know, that, that kind of shit. You know? <laughs> the guy can, he literally said it like that. He could not sound less enthusiastic about this show. And um, it kind of, I think it's because it sounds like they were trying to, and I just looked up a clip online. It did look really kitty. And, it, the concept sounds cool because it's like it's him, uh, White Tigress. Like it's, it was originally White Tiger, but they made it a girl. White Tigress, mm -hmm. Luke Cage, and then Iron Fist, all kind of working together in this team, kind of training trained by Iron Man, Thor, Captain America. Which that sounds cool to me. But from there though, just the way they went about it, because I watched a few clips online, like oh this is way too fucking kitty. This is way too silly, you know. So. <laughs> I can't remember if the one that I was the one that I saw a handful of episodes on was called the Ultimate Spider-Man one. There's Spectacular before that one. No, the Spectacular one was the one that like got the really high reviews. Lights. Yeah, I got like five out of five. It must be Ultimate Spider-Man then. And as I said, it wasn't bad. It, I don't think it was horrible. It wasn't you know amazing. It wasn't mm -hmm. totally you know my type of show. But if, you know, if I sat down and watched an episode, it wasn't like I was like, this is horrible. Well, even like as I'm saying, like maybe I was being a little too hard on the whole. Cause I, I'm just going off a trailer. I haven't even seen the whole show, but it just looked very kind. Of, what I want, what I got through, what it reminded me of was, it was. Um, you remember that show? It, this is gonna be '90s as fuck, and this is gonna such be such a pullback, and so many people aren't gonna remember it. But do you remember the show GI Joe Extreme? Yep. <laughs> it totally felt kind of like that, like GI Joe Extreme. Extreme. <laughs> yeah, and I remember like. Somewhere in the opening of that show, it just had like I was as a kid, I was just like, "Whoa, take a step back! What what the fuck are you talking about?" I just remember the main guy who I don't know if it was Duke or just some or Duke's replacement or what, whatever the fuck he used to be. He just literally looked into the screen, just into the screen with this roided out face, and would just say, "Cause that's the way we like it." GI Joe Extreme. Just like as a kid, I'm like, "No, no," and this is pre energy drinks. This is pre like you know yeah, like we're, chugging Mountain. We're fucking drinking Mountain Dew and Surge. Before that, before that. So you, you seen oh. before Surge? Is that how early? Because I thought that show was like mid-90s, but maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> the show was like, hey, kids, your parents aren't looking. <laughs> <laughs> Grab that bag of Doritos and get yourself a can of Surge. Get some extreme cheese Doritos and then reach into your mom. Like, I remember there was like this old like drug commercial where there was like, like some guy who was like, hey, kids, like... My name is my name is Snake. I'm the guy who's gonna be your best friend, but then get you all addicted to drugs. Also, the a bus goes by. He suddenly looks really scary. Like, do drugs, they fun, you know. It was almost kind of like that guy telling you, like, oh yeah, go into your purse, go get like your go go to your mom's purse, go grab two bucks, go down and get some pot, you know. This one was just like, yeah, go down, go get some, go to your mom's purse, go get Mountain Dew, and then che Cheetos. Come back, watch a stupid fucking show. <laughs> you know you want them. Yeah. Uh, Duke just talking to the screen saying that shit. Well, like one of the best parts about like the old GI Joe show is like when they used to have like and this, like other ones did it too like Sonic the Hedgehog and whatnot when they had like the, the very end of the show like okay kids now don't do something stupid. The PSA. Yeah, yeah. the PSA announcements and they don't like, fuck up. <laughs> yeah, but that's pretty much what it is, you know. <laughs> and then there was like yeah there was the, wasn't there a Sonic one where uh, about sexual assault. Yeah, yeah, he's like you know if somebody touches you and you don't like it. Call the cops on that motherfucker. It's because your dick. It's your dick. It's your choice. <laughs> Son, you just just grip, just grip, just kick him in the fucking balls. Say, I don't know you. <laughs> Call back to King of the Hill. <laughs> I remember that. I was just that, like, that, that literally should have been it slower. I'm really putting that. Your dick, your choice. <laughs> PSA. No, because there's a bunch of them. There's always kind of like don't. There's the typical. I because there's like, a typical. Don't like, cook don't, without your parents there. You don't want to start a fire. Don't take the keys. Mm -hmm. Don't drink don't. beer. That's that's because mommies and daddies have a hard life and they need. 
<laughs> I really wish that the G.I. Joe movies actually ended with a PSA or something like that. <laughs> Like, how much do you have to pay Dwayne Johnson to do, like, a PSA? They should, like, you know what they, they should do? They should have done a PSA and said, like, all, and Dwayne Johnson should have just looked at everybody and be like, all you motherfuckers in there who are, are throwing their popcorn on the ground and spilling their sodas and making these poor saps have to clean it all up. <laughs> he's just like, he's like, look behind you. <laughs> look around. He's just looking right there. And then they should just show it like he cuts to a full fucking and he runs up and he fucking like rock bottoms some guy that like left a bunch of trash. <laughs> Literally rock bottoms him. Well, that's like a special move. Oh, that was, is that what his special move is called? Yeah. Oh, I was like, oh, that's a good, that's a good one right there. That's actually a good job on your part. But like, oh, it's actually called the rock bottom. Yeah. All right. Or then he could use his other, like then there's another guy running away and then he like, he knocks him down, then he fucking people's elbows him. <laughs> Which is yeah, another special no. move. Just, yeah, just, <laughs> it's like fucking bloody, it's like bloody Mary. You don't look in, you don't like look in the, uh, um, you don't look in the mirror, shout bloody Mary several times. So don't look at the cinema and screen had, and shout don't like. Look, don't, don't look at the cinema screen and drop your like, uh, drop your trash. Cause that's when, otherwise Dwayne Johnson will appear right behind you and start killing everybody in the theater. <laughs> That would have been awesome if they would have thrown a PSA on the G.I. Joe, though. Like a little post-credit thing, you know? Yeah. Some, that, that'd be the ideal place to throw one. I do it, like, kind of comically, you know? Mm -hmm. Comically, yet slightly serious. <laughs> like, you're not <laughs> too sure what it's supposed to be. Like, <laughs> I just ends with, like, hey, kids, like, don't, don't like glitter, or I'll find you. <laughs> it's just, like, a slow zoom in on Dwayne Johnson's G. face. G.I. Joe! G.I. Joe on still just holds on his face, just holds for like a minute, just him straight face. You know, he sweats a lot. It's just a couple of beads of sweat just trickling down, like a slow zoom in <laughs> into his eyes. Speaking of The Rock, though, did you see that new trailer for Fast and Furious 7? I did, yeah. Look, they also had, they had Kurt Russell in it, too. He's like their, like, like, commander or whatever. Yeah, he's like a commander or bad guy. I wasn't too sure. He was only, he was like in it for a split second where I was like, was that Kurt Russell? Jason Statham's the bad guy. Kurt Russell's in there. I saw that. I think he's like the guy kind of like, I, all right, guys, we're, we're we're building a team to stop Jason Statham now. Or he's like going, I, I think they're part of like some team now, you know. Some, Dude, like, they should literally have the Expendables versus fucking Fast and the Furious movie. That's what there's got to be next. I'm betting on this. What, betting Jason, on... what if Jason? What if this was a crossover and that Jason Statham character somehow, some way, it was part of the Expendables team, and then they have to have this like he was just doing a job. That's all it was. <laughs> I yeah, I'll say this. I like uh, I I like uh, the, the Fast Furious movies. I'm betting on the Expendables though. I mean, the only people that I think that could really give the expendables a, a, a one person in there that can give them a real fight probably vin uh vin diesel yeah because without cars they're all fucked well yeah the rest of them are all fucking like oh god i don't have a steering wheel oh! dwayne johnson dwayne johnson yeah, oh, yeah. well diesel. yeah <laughs> yeah obviously dwayne johnson too yeah okay well whatever so, fuck it we should have dwayne johnson fucking and vin diesel versus the expendables <laughs> that'll give him a good fight i still think the expendables are overpowering i think so I mean, too they have any other people on their team, but they beat Mel, like one of them beat Mel Gibson single handedly. So I think that the others would, you know, and 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 like and what's his name and uh, uh, Guile, uh, not Guile, but he, we settled for Guile. Oh, John Claude uh, Van Damme. Yeah, John Claude Van Damme. Dude, speaking of Street Fighter, there's supposed to be that new Street Fighter movie that just came out. It's a Jap no, it's like an animated, like uh, not animated, live action. Yeah, um, a Japanese one. Online series. Yeah, it was an online series. Is that what that was? It was an online series. Okay, yeah, that makes sense why it was like two and a half hours long. Mm -hmm. like, I, I wanted to see that. I saw the trailer. It had time. like, I, I looked it up on Amazon and like the reviews are so high. It was like five out of five on everything. It's the same dude that made that like four minute like Street Fighter Legacy thing. Was it the one where like Ryu and Ken were fighting each other? Same exact dude, yeah. Okay, that's, I was kind of wondering if it had something to do with that. But, uh. Um, that was his calling card for it. Huh. So the, that guy was already an established filmmaker. He wasn't like an independent or anything like that. Well, I want to say, well, didn't it say that that guy, he was like, he was one of the actors. He wasn't a big guy, but he's more of a stuntman. He's one of the actors that uh, in like Born Identity. Yeah, he, I want to say he was an actor. So that's what I mean. He's established somewhere. He wasn't like, it wasn't like me or you or somebody else out there that just picked up a camera and shot it. Mm -hmm. but, still, uh, that's still, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, Josh got it. He's supposed to bring it over like all week long, and then he just somehow, some way, has been busy. So it's just like, 
I, I'd like to go get, but it's like, oh, that's twenty five dollars. That twenty five dollars could go to something else at the moment. I wish it was a little bit cheaper, but. Well, it's also at the same time, it's not going to some. I mean, I guess it is probably. It's being produced. It's being like, I guess, produced by Manga. So it's not like a tiny company, but at the same time, it's something. Oh yeah, it's not like it's not like Disney or something. Or, oh no, know, no, like, I don't mean like a bad like that. Yeah. But I'm just more like this for the fact that like, just how the guy got started. Yeah, you know. No, just, I get you. Yeah, it's like he had contacts, but um, no, I hear nothing but good things about it, and I'd like to really check it out. They say it's well, supposed it looks, to be the, the best Street Fighter movie, which is not competing with a whole lot, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't really. There isn't a whole lot you got to compete. With. You got to compete well, with the, Legend of Chun Li. The, well, that's pretty easy. You, you, if you put fucking like Ryu in a costume and you have him throw a punch at like you know anything, you would already beat that movie. But the animated movies aren't even that good. The only good animated well, movie really is pretty good. Street Fighter Two, yeah. Street Fighter oh, Two yeah. is the only good one. The other anime, like Street Fighter Alpha, I liked it as a kid, but I was forcing myself to like it because it was Street Fighter. And even looking back, that wasn't even that good of a movie. I never saw Street Fighter Like the Alpha, Alpha. Generations or something. I, I didn't see that, but um, I'm, I'm curious. I'd like to see it. Was one of, it was still at that age where it's like, I want to see it. I just don't want to pay $30 for it. Yeah. You know, because like we've gone over this before. We probably seen like Old Man on a Rockers. But it really, there was that point where you wanted the anime. Well, you didn't have youtube so all you really had was just kind of like trailers off of like poorly edited trailers off of other anime videos and then just the covers like well this looks cool but i won't yeah. know until i get and then you kind of get it and it has like that weird kind of like i'm just gonna say the weird like japanese barrier that you feel a little awkward like well i can't show that like for instance there's one i i like there's one i watched even if you're just okay with it you try and finish it off well I already started i might as well finish it like soul taker you know it would be something like there's some cool stuff about it, but then they bring in some weird like cultural difference thing that kind of throws you off. Like, Oh, this dude wants to fuck his sister. Okay. You know what I mean? That's like that uh, movie. Um, they made the re remake of recently. Old boy. Yeah. Old boy. That was like, once you get towards the end of that movie and you're just like, Oh, that's what's going on in it. Also well, like, it. also like in the old boy movie, that was, that was one of those movies where it's like, you wish somebody did a little bit better job in the subtitles. Because they would literally just show like a board with all. Because that movie's Korean, right? Yeah. Well, it's it's a Korean movie, but based on a Japanese manga. Okay. Well, let's just say it takes place in Korea for the sake of the movie. Is they would show this huge board with all this Korean writing on it, and then like they're, like the characters are looking at it like this is important. This is something very you know. And you're just sitting there going like, what? Well, what, what do you see? <laughs> I don't, see, I don't see anything. Me. You almost feel like the blind guy fucking in Robin Hood Man in Tights, like wondering what the <laughs> hell's going on. Like, and they do that a lot in that movie too, where there's like it zooms in. You could hear the music. Like, if you could read that, you'd be like, you know, oh, this is something that very, of... very important. But since there's no subtitles on it, well, I never saw the movie, but I never saw either of them. I wanted to see them. Just well, a I like Spike Lee, so I just wanted to check it out. But I never saw the other one either. It just never got around to it. But um. Somebody told me that it wasn't his sister or something. Like, he thought – he was looking for – somebody told me the way it happens is – Probably says just, it in those notes when it goes fucking zooms in the wall. It is not his sister. Well, he – it was one of those things like he was looking for his daughter and he thought this one chick was his daughter. But turns out this other chick on the side who he ends up fucking, they lied to him. That's actually his daughter. Yeah, that's what it was. It. That, and so it was just one of those things like, oh, fuck, you know. So – uh, just hearing that, I was like, oh, wow, that's way more fucked up than what Spencer told me, <laughs> you know? So um, that was actually, I mean, I think if it's something, I feel like sometimes when it comes to anime and manga, I feel like something, if you put something like that in there, that's almost kind of like trying to say or try and give you like, tr that, I mean, that's part of the story somehow. I guess mm -hmm. in some aspect, it's all part of the story, but it's when they just drop that shit in there and it's just kind of there for the sake of being there. It just seems kind of like it's just shock value and it just makes you feel kind of awkward. Like, for instance, even though I liked Jeff Loeb's run on Ultimates, and it's also Mark Millar's run on Ultimates, uh, how they made – maybe this is new. Maybe maybe it was part of the comics. I don't remember this, but how uh, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch were fucking each other. Yeah, that was fucking it was, weird. It was just like, that's just – you literally wrote that I don't in think there. That was, I don't think that was a part of the original comics. No, I never saw that ever in my entire life. 
So I was just like, where, where the fuck? And I want to say that like Mark Millar hinted at it, possibly just jokingly, maybe in the actual like in when in his run when Jeff Loeb came in, I think he's just no, 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 they're fucking, they're fucking, you know. So like author's note down there in the corner, you know, they're you know, fucking. <laughs> Make sure to check out Ultimates issue thirteen, still on newsstand. What the fuck are you doing? Go get it. Don't be waiting. Yeah. So it was one of those things like, oh, okay, uh, you know, I just don't really know where that, it just, every so often it seems like, oh, okay, it's really important to the story, I get it, and I, it's kind of like the Oedipus thing, or just trying to like, you know, it's real shock value, I get that, but sometimes I feel like it's just something they plop in there, and it's just not really necessary to the overall story. It's it just almost just goes like, look at that, look how ballsy I am at writing, look, look, don't fucking look away, <laughs> like editor's note. Just like, it's fucked up. <laughs> you know, it just says that in the editor's note. Ain't this fucked up? If you look away, I will show you Quicksilver's cock. You're like, why? <laughs> you look away, Jeff Loeb standing behind you with a picture of this which is huge. <laughs> Don't look away. Just all this gray hair sticking up like fucking like Magneto's head. <laughs> it's like, why are you showing that to me, Jeff Loeb? I don't know. But yeah. But yeah. I was still I still like that run for the most part, but you know. Yeah. That was a little there's, there's always weird things they want they want to throw in there and what and that my, the thing I was going back to though, that's the thing about like you'd buy like some anime you didn't know anything about, so you just you'd get it like, okay, I'll check this out. And there'd always be some weird thing like that, like, oh, I didn't know this was gonna be in there, you know. But you'd still force yourself to watch it because oh, you know, the rest of it still may be good, but you'd it was like here's one more thing I can't show my redneck friends. Yeah. <laughs> Or other people, for that matter, sometimes that won't um, yeah. be, that won't be understanding. Yeah. But yeah, no, I want to check out that. Sh- I'd like to buy that Street Fighter one just to kind of like support like that cause of like making like true movies. Just once, once yeah, like, exactly. oh, Jesus Christ, twenty five dollars. Um, well, uh, I'll get to it and if, if you know, money was just hanging around for a little bit more. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, I I actually bought for I bought like because uh, I don't buy brand new movies that much anymore. But I bought like Snowpiercer the other day. For, like, oh yeah, bucks. for how much? 20 bucks. See, 20 bu- I really will say this. It sounds like a weird thing, but like, if the movie was probably 20 bucks, I probably would have just went, fuck it, I'm going to buy it. I don't care if that money could probably go to other things that I need at the moment. Uh-huh. But that $25 makes me think. I, it, it's the really five, the extra it's, five. It's the extra five. It's kind of like when Machete Kills came out. It was like $25. And I was just like, I kind of wa- wanted it, but I don't know about $25 wanted it. That's like a, that's a quarter of $100. It's not, as as, it's not even as good as Machete won, so it's like, oh, well, you know. It's like, well, I'll get to it. I'll get to it, yeah. Let's, you know. $10. I gotta get machete one before I get machete kills. So, but yeah, it's like you know. I was I was like you. I was waiting on that specialty version of machete. I know I wait, and then like I saw it one day for like I think it was like under ten bucks. I'm like fuck it, I'm gonna buy it. And mm-hmm. to this day, it still hasn't come out. So I guess that purchase was worth it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I like to get machete one. Machete kills. I'll, I'll wait till it's a little lower. That was a little bit of a disappointment. But yeah, um, I still liked it. Though. Yeah, it's like I don't think it was like a disappointment. Just yeah, not nearly as good, but. It, it was just kind of like, I mean, it seemed like the first like half of the movie there, he would be like, he'd do something violent. He just cut a guy in half and just run away. There'd be very little fighting involved. He'd just slice. And then plus there's the guy who had a split personality. They would come and go. It wasn't funny. It wasn't entertaining. It was just kind of like, what the fuck was that about? And, yeah. uh, just something kind of tolerated. Just, I was so glad when he died, but, um, well, I think the other thing maybe not buy it too, is just the fact is when I noticed it didn't look like it had really any special features on it too. Because uh-huh. if, if that movie said, like, it includes, you know, 20 minutes to Robert Rodriguez, you know, hand put it back in himself, I'd be like, oh, fuck, yeah, I totally got to get this. But when it's mm-hmm. not there, then I'm like, don't fuck me over like Machete 1. Don't fuck me over like Machete 1. I don't know. I don't trust it. Not for $25. It'll say special features and more. And, yeah, and more that more does not mean anything. That could be a trailer for all you know. That could be a trailer in a still gallery. <laughs> yeah. You almost don't really get the still galleries anymore. That's like an old-fashioned feature. <laughs> No, you get that on a lot, going back to anime, you get that on a lot of anime DVDs. So, like, you know that movie you just got done watching? Here's a still gallery. Yeah. Watch it in no motion. <laughs> yeah. You saw it in motion with dialogue and uh, the story. Looking, My heater's all fucked up and no water's running to it. So it's just, <clears throat> like, it's like, where's the fucking water? <clears throat> you know, <laughs> almost like it's going to fucking turn into Optimus Prime and kick the, kick the shit out of me over here. It'd be like the plant on fucking, like, Little Shop of Horrors. It's like, feed me! Feed me. There's actually, um, I kind of forgot about it, but I watched this video of John Chan and it reminded me it, for Halloween. He was talking about, are you afraid of the dark? Mm-hmm. And I forgot about this episode. Do you remember the episode where there is this kid who was just bullied 
and he was like supposed to be a nice kid, but he was just bullied and fucked around with a lot by a lot of people. And he goes down to this basement, and if there's music playing, the basement comes to life and tries to suck him into like this portal to I don't know where hell or whatever. And um, don't say hell, but you know, just this he's gonna just like it's trying to suck him in. But if you pl- if you unplug the music, then it just stops. It doesn't try anymore. Basically, at some point, like there's this bully that keeps on beating him up. He traps the bully down there, starts playing music. And basically works it as a sacrifice. It sucks the bully in. Then he goes back down there. This blue light's coming from it. And there's a nice new bike there. It's just like, hello, Tommy. It's okay. I'm not going to bother you. You just need to feed me. And he's just like, he says, and I'll make anything yours. Like, anything? And he has a shitty little sister who is basically the sister from, like, the... Captain I like Crunch. Captain Crunch. So why don't you marry? It? That equivalent, you know. Everything she'd say was like that throughout the whole episode. <laughs> And she says, like, Billy, mom says you have to watch me, which means you have to make me dinner. Then he kind of looks upstairs, looks and smiles at the camera like, he's going to kill his little fucking sister. That's how the show ends. So like, that show had some dark moments sometimes. Huh. I don't know if I remember that episode exactly, but. That just reminded me of the little shop of horrors. Like, feed me, you know. Feed me Seymour. At least it wasn't like, Seymour, not only do I need to be fed, but I need to be I fucked. I don't <laughs> <laughs> you know that that regime or he's like but I don't wanna he was like you better fucking well, do it I'm a plant and, and a pot where are you gonna go <laughs> that well, was I guess I could like, just leave like yeah like, you're gonna walk out that door and all you're gonna do is think of me doesn't everybody die in the original yeah the original one's like like really bi- the real one's actually like better actually in my opinion I think the it's, musical, it's treated like huh the musical no the, the original one's not a musical no, no, you said like I thought you said the oh I thought you said the musical was better in your opinion. No, the I think the original one's better. I guess it's just this really like kind of dark. Yeah, it's it's almost like a dark comedy more than anything else. Because mm-hmm. people die in weird ways, but it's almost kind of like funny at the same time. And he has to feed the plant. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually, just eats him. And it's like no. I will say like as far as a musical goes, as the Little Shop of Horrors is probably one of the better musicals, but. Well, it's a com- comedical music. If you, it's a comedy musical, and if, if it's comedy, I can it's accept got, it more. It's got Steve Martin, and you know. <laughs> I'll say this: I'm not really. It's it's not really a favorite movie of mine, but and you know it's it's enjoyable. But I'll say this: all the parts with Steve Martin are fucking hilarious. Like what he'll be just be writing, and he, like the little the little like physical gags. Like he'll get off his motorcycle, the motorcycle goes, stops, and it, as soon as he stops, he'll like just swing around off the motorcycle, stop, and do like this kind of like pose. I guess. This little pose, his hands will be out, down. It's almost kind of like the opposite of like jazz hands. Like instead of up, they're down. He does that, this thing stops, and then he walks. Like that kind of shit right there. I found hilarious. Like everything with Steve Martin, the Bill Murray character who was like reprising the Jack Nicholson role, Uh that all was like fantastic. And and, and, like, you know, even some of the jokes and like the puppeteering work is kind of cool. Well, yeah, I I think it's Frank Oz and all that stuff too. Because, yeah, I, I mean, whenever a movie has, like, a lot of stuff, like, puppets and whatnot, and I always kind of, like, it's going to sound weird, but that's always kind of, like, a plus to me if I see, like, a movie with a lot of cool creatures and whatnot. That's why I look forward to Guillermo del Toro movies. He's going to have some weird, fucked-up-looking puppet at some point, most of the time. Yeah, you got to put those puppeteers to work. Yeah, I don't think that happened so... Or it probably happened a little bit in Pacific Rim. I think it was mostly CG, but I think that probably when... I bet when they were going through, like, you know, the... I've only seen the movie once in, in, in theaters, but... There is the part twice. where they're there's the part where they're w- walking through the whole little uh, Charlie Days walking through like the whole little like uh, black market like kaiju organ thing. Those are probably puppets. Uh, if I had to guess. Those are probably puppet puppets. If I had to guess, I don't even remember what they all were, but I'm guessing those are puppets. So yeah. But yeah, well, that's probably the place to cut it off at. Um, that 150 episodes. So. There you Nothing go. special here, just another episode. I wish yeah. I, I couldn't really think of anything special. I tried to get Wes on, but he was busy. And I tried to get uh, Josh and other people, but you know that there's always that time frame issue. It's just like motion pictures, you know. Everybody's so busy for you. They want to be a part of it, but they have, you know. I, I guess what it comes down to is like if that's not your passion in life, then you don't mm-hmm. care really. You know what I mean? Well, I guess for me, I, I'm like that exact opposite person though, because I always just think. You know, whenever somebody asks me to do something, I just pretty much always say yes. I mean, unless there's somehow some way I'm just not there, I always do because I think of myself in that position. And I think it's one of those ones like I've just known from making movies and all kinds of things when you're trying to ask people to help you out and nobody's helping you out really. You know, when me and you were fucking sitting there on a bench waiting for somebody to show up who oh, said they were right. going to be there. And, and so since by knowing that, when other people ask me to help them out or to do things, I just always say yes. 
and, and unless for some reason, like say I'm not there or there literally is something that I can't make it because of that, I will, I'll, I'll, I'll reschedule it, you know, because I just think it's like, I don't want to let somebody else down, you know? You know I- I'm not trying to like bring down our friends or anybody who couldn't come on. Just oh no no no, but you know it's just yeah yeah. There's there's a different mindset, I think. There's a different mindset, and um, I'm not saying they're doing that. What you're talking about, but I think there is. It's like oh, we're we're more into it. And on top of that, though, you know, sometimes they got shit just going on. I would like to. I I think I would like to say this. And once again, this is me kind of like I'm not saying. This isn't me like two years ago saying, I'm making a comic book and it's going to be done by this time. Like it took a long fucking time. So now I'm just going to go at my own pace and not really set a date for it. But um, regarding that, though, not doing that, but saying we would like to do more podcasts and kind of come out with a network for this if we can. Because I think it'd be awesome if you and RJ and Cameron had your video game podcast. Yeah, it'd be nice to have that. But once again, there's always those time issues. And that's you always kind of wonder that for other people. That, that That's the hardest. That's the hardest thing you'll ever find in life is people that are like. 100 percent committed you know everybody yeah. I, think, I think most people they like the idea but when it's not their job it's not their thing it's not their passion mm. then as well as ones like they want to do it sort of like you know i mean it's like fuck yeah, it because i'd like I, I know i'd like to start up another show over here and not just to be kind of like i'm doing my own show <laughs> but just more just just to kind of like start a little network of it you know what i mean kind of like nothing as big as smodcast but it'd just be cool to get more shows out there get more of like so that's i guess if there is one thing to take from 150 like oh this is what we'd like to do we'd like to reach that point um looking to expand but beyond that though it's still all in the planning stages well that's because skype's not portable sounds weird to say it like that but that's yeah that's the downfall of skype is you can't just go like oh i'm gonna go interview this person it's like uh, I mm-hmm. can't go do that. It's like that. That's, I guess, where like the other podcasts would come in handy is where you just take your microphone with you and just record it the old fashioned way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, so I, I still want to do old man orange, but there is a few people I met like, Oh, I think this guy would be like pretty cool to bring on the podcast. If not have his own show. I think Wes is funny and smart enough to have his own show. He doesn't even need me, you or me. He could just have his own the show. One man band, it. but yeah. But the, once, once again, though, it comes down to that thing. It's like, if it's not somebody's passion, it's like, it's always hard to get them to commit. You know, as I said, People yeah. love being on podcasts, you know, and they, they like being in movies. It's just, but they just don't have that commitment sometimes. And that's always like a hard part. Yeah. You know? Boy, wait, that should, don't, don't let that on a downer note, but you know, 150. I don't like to say like a downer. It's just, it's, it's like reality it's of life. life. Yeah. And that's why if, if there's anything you take away from this, when your buddies ask you to help them out or to hang out or to do something like that, go over there, go over there and help them out. Don't fucking let them down. Don't leave, you know, because nobody wants to be let down. And if you have to ask, oh, what's that noose? Like, and, and, the, and the hanging in the corner says, oh, it's okay. I don't need it anymore. Someone came over. <laughs> exactly. And that's it. <laughs> that's what you got to do. Because you never know. Just they they could the be there like out. that. And if you keep, you know, blowing them off because you got something better to do, like work or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got a wife? Oh, okay. Oh, you have a kid? No, oh, whatever. <laughs> It's like, yeah, I, I'm trying to do, try to run a fucking podcast here, man. Run a fucking podcast. But till then, I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. I'm Ryan Donegan. And we will see you on 151. Goodbye. Thanks for listening to the Old Man Orange Podcast. Check out our website at oldmanorange.com for even more podcasts, cartoons, videos, music, and more. Send us an email at oldmanorangepodcast at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review us on iTunes, Podomatic, or any of the other fine sites we might be located on. If you want to help out even more, click on the Amazon or GameStop links on our webpage before you make any purchases there. It won't cost you a penny, but it sends us a little something our way. Thanks again, and tune in next week for more Old Man Orange Podcast.